Yeah, MP3 scap recorder has stopped working. Right. Oh dear. Too much innuendo. Got broke. <laughs> everyone and welcome back to Hogwarts slash the vassals of Kingsgrave great Harry Potter reread volume 2 or episode 2 whichever way you want to swing that uh, my name is Michal I go by ink as rain on the podcast device and fire forums and I am joined by several eager students today including Pod's Plight I am Paul and yes I go by Pod's Plight uh, uh, you just threw me off there with the real names going on okay <laughs> uh, what, what was i supposed to do i don't know whatever it's been a weird day i spent a long time writing about the cursed child so my mm -hmm. head's in a weird place right now matt hey varley on the forums bing uh shoe shine on the forums nadia hi everyone this is nadia blue, i was about to say blue eyed queen casey Hey, it's Casey, Blue-Eyed Queen on the forums. And Zach. Alias on the forums. And Matthew. Hi, Barry on the forums. I swear I'm not, like, an idiot all the time. Just, like, when I'm on Skype with you guys. It's your fault. Okay. So sorry. <laughs> hey, I'm Paul, Sir General on the forums. Crap. There you go. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Returning to this episode is Nadia, who we sadly lost to some technical difficulties last uh, time, um, about a million and a half years ago. Um, but Nadia, do you want to tell us how you got into Harry Potter? Yeah, okay, so I was in 11th grade, and I was, I think, 15 or 16, I don't remember. Um, and I decided to sit in on my friend's class, who was taking, I don't even remember what the subject was, and why I was in her class but for some reason I decided to be there. And anyway, basically we just wanted to talk and we couldn't talk outside. So we just, you know, it was a large class and we decided <laughs> to sit together. And she had one of the Harry Potter books. I think at this point, Goblet of Fire was already out or it had just come out, I think. And anyway, she was reading one of the books and she told me what it was about. And obviously, you know, there were wizards and stuff. So I started reading and I was hooked. And I, the next three years were very, very difficult waiting for Order of the Phoenix. Um, oh, yeah, you got in, like, right at the wrong time. That yeah, I yeah, can't imagine what that'd be like, having to wait for a book forever. <laughs> <laughs> Worst. Yeah, I thought three years was, like, the longest time. <laughs> I should have known better. Summer tryout. Uh, Matthew, how did you get into Harry Potter? Oh, um, I was about nine or ten when my father read read the first book to to me and my brother when we were younger. So after that, I listened. I, I first listened to the audiobooks, I guess, uh, in German at the time. And um, I think eventually, eventually, like I read the books, just you know, in in German until I think it was book f book four, and then once book five came out. Uh, no, but, no, book five. And then once book six came out, I started reading them in English because I, I just, there, there was always a bit of a, I think there was a delay in, in translation. So they, the, the German version would come out later than the English one. So I wasn't prepared to wait at that point. And I, I just read the English versions um, for the last two books. So, um, yeah, my parents got me into it. So that's, that's, how it, that's how it works. So, so did they help you learn English, or did you just know English at, at the point that you read them? Uh, I was, I mean, I was about, um, the sixth book came out in 2006, if I remember, yeah? So I was about 16, mm -hmm. yeah, and at, at that time I I'd already had lots of English uh, courses in in my uh, secondary school. And so by that point I was, I felt comfortable enough to sort of read a book like that. Um mm -hmm. In English, because you know, um, I mean that 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 it, it was. I, I was at a in a school where they where they sort of prioritized um, languages a lot. So um, mm -hmm. we, we had courses like in our in our first language, like the most important ones. Then our second language 
would be uh, like courses like uh, history or geography and that sort of thing. And then you had a third language, which for me was English, but we still had a lot of uh, weekly courses in English uh, for the English language course. So, and that, by that point, I was sort of comfortable right. reading stuff in English. But yeah, that is a smart system. If only we <laughs> had that here. Well, actually, um, I read the first Harry Potter book in Spanish for a. Uh, high school course that we did it, we like we had to choose a book and i chose harry potter because i th- thought like at least i knew the story so if i didn't know what was going on i definitely like kind of knew what was going on <laughs> so yeah i mean i have copies in hebrew but i've never like really gotten past like the first page because it's like did read it it's it's too it's too well i mean my hebrew sucks but it, also it's just like super weird to me because i know the english words like so well that like then it's, you know, reading it in a different language is just like, eh, not the same. Yeah, I think oh. there's a translation. I've never, I've never tried to read it. I read the Chinese translation of the first book. And it's not great. Translations are tough. They're, uh, yep. Especially for kids' books, I think they're, like, I don't know if as much atten- attention is always put into them. But we also have Small Paul, around, hey. as, as, as I forgot. <laughs> um, and, Paul uh, S. Paul S. Or yeah, but we we'll call him Small should... Paul. Let's, let's yeah. get real. Mm. The, the S is for small. The S is for small. Yes. yes. Paul Small. Uh, how did you get into Harry Potter? Uh, I got into it when I met one of my really good friends, Dan, in grade school, and he said. What do you like? I'm like, oh, I like Star Wars and stuff like that. He's like, oh, cool, I love Harry Potter. And I'm like, oh, all right, what's that? And then he glared at me and then <laughs> went over to his desk, pulled out a copy of Sorcerer's Stone. He had, like, all the books up till, I think it was uh, Order of the Phoenix in his desk just at school and just handed it to me. And he's like, give it back to me by the end of the week. And I'm like, okay. And... Yeah, he got me started, and I just really enjoyed it. Awesome. Now, do you prefer the Sorcerer's Stone or the Philosopher's Stone? Uh, I use them basically interchangeably. I like to think I'm smart by knowing that it's called Philosopher's Stone, because I get the reference. But then again, I'm American, so... Sorcerer's Stone! <laughs> 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 yeah, well, yeah. Uh, no, I we in German we didn't we didn't really have that kind of um, uh, yeah that kind of issue because they just said you know it's called um, it's actually trans if you translate it like word for word it would be this this uh, stone of um, uh, the the wise the wise man's stone or something like that something like so it would be. Sort of like a philosopher, something. Stein der Weisen means stone of the wise. So that's what, ah. what it is. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's a, there's you know a lot of things that you can like see how how they approach it. Like in a translation, like it's it's going to be different, but um, the essence is still the same. Very cool. Yeah, I imagine it was similar when philosopher's they had to translate it from British to, to American. Uh, philosopher's stone just makes more sense to me. Because, you know, it's involved with alchemy, so it's... It's the actual name yeah. of the thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you... probably that's that that was the name of the version that I read, so I guess... Did, oh, so you had, you had the British versions, not the American versions. Yeah, I had the first one. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, could you imagine, like, Full Metal Alchemist, like, had, like, mm. the Sorcerer's Stone instead of Philosopher's Stone? I was just going <laughs> to say that. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure someone made that joke, like, years ago somewhere on an yeah. internet forum. Yeah. <laughs> somewhere on some internet forum. Somewhere. <laughs> I think everything's like, been said. Yeah, a poster who has now gone on to become a lawyer and only reads John Grisham novels, just, like, Ugh. perked up his head. and. <laughs> <laughs> he just shivers a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Dark times. Anyway... Let's get started, yeah? Yeah? I mean, yeah. We, we had, yeah. we had like, news and that, like, oh my gosh, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child came out, but, like, I kind of don't want to talk about that. So, 
you know. We can talk about it in the after show. Yeah, we can talk there about it. There will also... Be a podcast of its own, I think. It of it. Yeah, yeah, Eddie wants to do that. Um, Separate yeah, episode. I think Glenn's doing it. Yeah, the, both of both of those guys. Um, yeah, those. Yeah. So y'all are all read the uh, Cursed Child by now, or <laughs> no? <laughs> no. 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 I haven't, but I'd. I haven't either. Damn. Yeah. I've not either, but I don't want to. So. Okay. Aww. Mixed opinions, I guess. <laughs> but I wasn't we can, planning yes, on. Yeah, sure. I wasn't planning on buying it, and then I saw that there were two copies left at Target when I needed, like, actual things, and I was just like, you know what, I'm already spending $200 here on stuff I don't need, so I'll just get this, too. <laughs> God, forbid, uh, God forbid a hope-filled child gets it instead of me. Taking <laughs> <that> gift. <laughs> Saving the children. Mm. Uh, anyway, alright, so let's, let's get into our, the second half of the uh, Sorcerer's Slash Philosopher's Stone. Um, we're going to do the last seven chapters. Seven? Eight chapters? Um, and, because I can't count. Hi. Um, yeah, starting with Halloween. The next morning, Harry and Ron are discussing what the dog could be guarding when the mail arrives. Harry receives a first-class broomstick, along with a note from Professor McGonagall summoning him to quit Quidditch practice. Malfoy tells Harry that first-year students are not allowed on broomsticks, the little shit. When he tries to report Harry to Professor Flitwick, Flitwick, Flitwick doesn't give a fuck and just says Harry's pretty good at it. Harry later meets Oliver Wood to learn the basics of Quidditch. Uh, on Halloween night... Yes, Zach, that was all in Spark Notes. I'm using Thug Spark Notes. Uh, thug Spark on, Notes. On, on, Halloween, on Halloween, Flitwick begins teaching uh, the students how to levitate people. Only Hermione succeeds. Ron, offended by her air of superiority, makes a nasty comment that Hermione overhears. Harry notices her running off in tears. Harry and Ron arrive at the Halloween feast to hear Professor Quirrell, the teacher of Defense Against the Dark Arts, give a terrifying announcement about a 12-foot troll in the building. As the prefects lead, uh, lead the students back to the dorms, Harry re realizes that Hermione does not know about the troll. They head off to warn her and come upon the troll. Unwittingly, they lock it in the girl's bathroom, probably to kill Hermione. Uh, using teamwork and magic, though, the three of them manage to knock out the troll. Professor McGonagall finds them and begins to scold the boys. Uh, Hermione interjects that Harry and Ron were looking for her. She then lies, saying that she went to face the troll herself and that Ron and Harry had been trying to save her from it. At this point, Hermione becomes their friend. If only defeating trolls were that simple on the internet. Ha! <laughs> 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 I'm no, I'm terrible, but yeah. No, Not it's, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's um, yeah. I, I guess uh, it's a. I mean, a lot, a lot to discuss in in the, in the chapter in terms of. Uh, I I don't know. Like, there's there's this. Thing I mean, does Snape not show up with the with the other teachers and they they see him like limping and stuff, or is that later? I'm not, I don't recall. Later. I just read the Spark now. Notes. <laughs> oh, I see Spark Notes. Yeah, I think okay. that's going on in this chapter because Quirrell's going to the trap door and Snape also does. Was there Quidditch in this chapter? Yeah, this is where he learns about Quidditch. This is where yeah. it's the, the one on one. This is where we all learn about Quidditch. Uh. Yeah, because I I have a note. I was like I was like reading this, and I could not stop thinking about Paul's summary from last time, and I couldn't take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait until the next chapter. I'm so excited. Oh, <laughs> Difficult when you someone is called Oliver Wood. It's like. Uh, the joke make the joke writes itself, but um, too eager yeah. to fly again to wait for wood. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, You're Casey. learning, Casey. You're welcome. Anyway, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I I'm going to talk about the end of this chapter, which I really like, even though. I guess it's, I don't know, it's a little simplistic, but I kind of love that. Like, I love that idea that, like, you do some things and then you're friends, you know? And then, and I don't know, I've kind of found that, like, Zach, stop it, I swear. 
<laughs> what is going on? I'm having He's flashbacks to the night fanfic. where Zach Sorry, just, I just took okay, all the quick, dirty quick quotes. Quote. A quick quote from Halloween before before we continue. At once the black ball rose high in the air and then pelted straight at Harry's face. That's all I've got. Uh, powerful prose. Uh, powerful prose. About Good. Ledgers. Anyway, continue your points. I don't oh, wait. know. Whatever. Wait. I think it's great that they're friends. The end. <laughs> no, Nicole. <laughs> yes, How yes, do you- I will that part. I guess so how, do you get, uh, how do you get a troll of... into Hogwarts? Just lead him by the hand or uh, magically apparate him into there? What, don't they have defenses against that sort of thing? You have maybe... a, you, you a my... gift with trolls. <laughs> <laughs> my control is like uh... secret passages inside, right? And nobody's like, nobody else knows about them. Yeah, there's we'll... ways in and out of Hogwarts when the story needs there to be. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. he'd... No, I don't think just... like it's he just wait. I mean, the, the, whoever let the whoever let the troll in because we need to cut that stuff with Quirrell out until the last chapter. Um, mystery, um, yeah, mystery. Um, no, the um, until the um, I mean, the, the troll only comes in once once everyone is at the feast, so no one's noticing, you know, that he that he comes in. That's the thing, and it's only once Quirrell comes into the. Uh, Great Hall that they are made aware of the presence of the troll, essentially, because everyone is away. So, so that's that's. I mean, it's, it seems plausible. I mean, he could just oh. I mean, go through through the main gate. Like, if no one's there to see him, then there's or hear him, then there's. It's much easier. You know? Filch forgot to lock the door again. Oh, wait, wait! Quirrell uh, brought in a troll anyway, right, to defend uh, the Philosopher's Stone. So maybe it was the same one. I kind of wonder if it was the same one. No, no, I think the one that, that, that the just, stone is bigger than the one that they... Yeah, they, they make note that it was much bigger. Maybe just smuggled in one extra with the other one? Backup troll. <laughs> is he hiding it? <laughs> Behind the other troll, of course. <laughs> he was fury type, furiously typing a comment at some point, probably. Um, but, yeah. Quirrell, what is that? Uh, it's another troll. Uh, what's it doing here? Uh... They're mating. Yeah, there's a couple. other person talking uh, to Quirrell. Who is this supposed to be? Uh, that was my Dumbledore. D- does he not uh, sound gay enough? Uh, okay. Uh, spoiler. <laughs> Dumbledore. <laughs> Spoilers for comments from Twitter. To comment. Yes. <laughs> well. Um, Spoilers. But yeah, it's it's weird that they. I mean, it's weird that that a couple of first graders can defeat a troll. Like, how would that be a good defense against anything? Like, dude, the, a bunch of grade schoolers beat up like all the Death Eaters. It doesn't make any sense. There's no hierarchy. <laughs> hey, I think they were high schoolers by kids. then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I think I mean, at the very I, least, in this case, they do a good job making it seem like a fluke. Like, yeah. they, like it just it was kind of a weird circumstance that it worked out for them. And the troll is supposed to be really dumb, I guess. So it's not. It wasn't that yeah. hard to, to beat. Yeah. And Ron manages to use like the one spell he knows. Yeah. That happens a lot. Him. Where they yeah. always use the one spell they're working on. Should be already. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just glad that Ron got to say Leviosa and not Leviosa. <laughs> but that's. Hedward, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Hermione explaining. That's like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's basically that, that's basically fifty percent of what she does in the first half of the book. Basically, just you know, fifty percent gener- pretty generous. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. Honest, yeah. This is like this is. I think a lot of the books could have been like Hermione, Hermione explaining, and the or Hermione explains the, you know, the Goblet of Fire, how to yeah. evaporate, like all this stuff. <laughs> Comes in handy. Yeah. I think this. I think this chapter is also kind of the first show of, of Gryffindor bravery, if that's an actual thing, <laughs> and kind of showing okay, like how it's how it is relevant to their characters. We see it with Harry and Ron willing to go to go try to save Hermione, and also in, in Hermione taking the blame for it, which is not an easy thing for her to do, certainly. And with kind of what Mikhail said earlier, that she just kind of becomes friends with them. I think it's kind of a requirement that. If someone saves your life, you kind of have to at least be friends with them. No, Not just kind of no. like look <laughs> at them and go, well, uh, see ya. That's 
That's not what happened between Severus Snape and James Potter. Counterpoint. Mm. <laughs> Your father was a uh, this one, like, yeah, We'll get I, there. We'll get it. there eventually. We'll get there eventually. Well, that was a different situation. They basically defeated a troll head together. Right. So, no, I yeah. just always remember this meeting a lot to me because it was so kind of simple and automatic. And, like, as a kid, that felt really genuine to me. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that's it's how good. you become friends as a kid. You just do, you know, one person yeah. says one thing and you okay, let's be friends. Right, exactly. I also... I also feel like this chapter for me in this in this book is kind of the turning point from where I'm kind of like slowly reading the Sorcerer's Stone and then this chapter happens and I'm like, oh yeah, this is great. And I go through the rest of the book within like half a day. Yeah. Yeah, it gets a lot better after this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was this also another case of teachers terribly mismanaging a situation? Just letting kids wander off and not just going to deal with the troll themselves? Seems what? like they could do better. Hogwarts unsafe. They were going to, in their in their defense, I mean, they didn't do a lot of research on the matter, but they were going to go to the troll. Like, the teachers were all like, hey, we're going to the basement, the dungeon, to, to deal with the, to the troll. The tr troll in the basement. How are we going to deal with this troll? We're going to kick the shit out of it until something happens. All right. I mean, that seems like a solid strategy, given the way that Harry, Ron, and Hermione get rid of the troll. <laughs> True. Yeah. This. Maybe Quirrell just lied about where the troll actually was, which is why they didn't find it sooner. Well, yeah. And I persons mean, are I terrible. Think that's what, what the point was, right? That he he wanted to distract everyone. But wouldn't his motive be to send... I guess maybe that makes sense. I guess also, though, his motive is that he wants to send them away from the, the room so he can get in there, the third floor. But I guess if they didn't know where he was, yeah, it would take them longer to find it. So it would be more of a distraction. And, I mean, but isn't everybody? Is that is his own brother was missing. Who? Percy what? didn't realize his brother was missing. Oh yeah, that's because Percy's an idiot. Yeah. Aww. I don't know Percy's how Percy got very, to Gryffindor. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> very self-important. Like, yeah, it's um, it's weird. Like in the, I mean, he's sort of self-important and you know, really annoying about it, which is a um, terrible combination. But yeah. I guess that's, it just shows, like, you know, the, 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 the hat doesn't really, like, sort you out, you know, in terms of what the, what the copyrighted um, elements of the uh, different houses are. It's just like, yeah, it's probably just a choice, right? So maybe Percy thought hard enough, I want to be in Gryffindor, and then he was in Gryffindor, so, you know. Burn a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible system. system. <laughs> anyway. Do you think do you think anybody cares about troll rights? Like people eventually care about house elves and stuff? Do you think maybe Hagrid likes trolls? There's there's or just well, no likes trolls. everything. Oh. I think he used to rough. like this. Like giants and centaurs and like all this stuff. Like there's a lot of be like goblins, you know, there's a lot of beings that kind of seem to be officially second class and mm -hmm. it's hard to tell because they're magical so like you wouldn't be like you know i mean maybe maybe there's like a certain parallel to like people think that gorillas should have like rights because they they have more advanced like cognitive functions or whatever but like the wizarding world doesn't seem that advanced harambe yeah definitely <laughs> I, w I was waiting for someone to say something. R.I.P. And we're here. Okay. Shall, shall we move on? Yes, sure. let's move on and let uh, Pod continue to destroy my childhood with his description of, uh, of Chapter 12 Quidditch. Hooray. Indeed. I'm so ready. Yeah. You might Ooh, say your body is ready. Ah, yes. damn it, Zach, I was going to say that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Paul. Things are getting a bit nippy around Hogwarts as November rolls around. Temperatures are brisk and schoolwork is piling up. The snug sweaters and helpful study buddies are keeping everything under wraps. Harry is brushing up on his Quidditch knowledge with a book from the library and gearing up for his first match. The day before the game, our three magical amigos are chilling in a chilly courtyard with nothing but Hermione's fiery jam jar to keep them warm. When Snape comes limping over, they are all quite sure that he's not ready for that flaming jelly and quickly hide it away. <laughs> There should be pause. 
They're, what? <laughs> they're shifty. Laugh break. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> their shifty posture and general disposition is clearly suspicious. So Severus goes all stern librarian on their ass and takes Harry's book and five points from Gryffindor for good measure. Later that evening, while the two dullard boys are exploiting Hermione's kindness and brain power to improve their grades, Harry decides to go and confront Snape and get his Quidditch book back. He heads off to the staff lounge, knocks a couple of times, peeks inside. Peeping Harry then spies Filch and Snape having a private moment together. Snape's robes are hoisted up, and Argus is patiently tending his down below. Oh, damn it. Oh, God, Argus is in this chapter. I would never let you near this. <laughs> He's patiently tending his down belows, which have apparently taken quite the beating. A bloody torn wound is clearly visible as Snape laments the difficulties of coping with three aggressive heads at once. That is certainly a lot to handle. <laughs> Sorry. Ugh. When Harry tries to pull out without creaking the door, he spotted by the furious he spotted by the furious and severe Severus and given a sharp tongue lashing and forced to leave empty handed. After recapping his heated this heated encounter to his rapt friends, they conclude that Snape tried and failed to get into the well guarded mysterious passageway and steal whatever Dumbledore is hiding up there. <laughs> Water break. Bravo. <laughs> For any children listening, that uh, that was referring to like, Snape's leg. Yes, indeed. <laughs> that, yeah, one of his legs, right? Yeah. We yes. were letting children listen to this. I don't know. Maybe parents are stupid. You know what? Kids have all kinds of iPods and phones and things. They 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 know how to use the iTunes. Like Paul. Who, who do you yeah, think like does Paul. most of our? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> who do you think? We're... Where do you think most of our YouTube comments come from? Yeah, that's true. At breakfast the next morning, a nervous Harry refuses to eat anything, despite an abundance of delicious sausages on display, and Seamus Finnegan's (laughs) insistence that he ought to fill up in order to fortify himself against the brutal clabbering that he's about to receive. Eventually, the Quidditch ground is packed with excited spectators, and Potter's friends pull out all the stops to lift his spirits. An old rat ruined sheet is painted in his honor and made to flash colorfully. Presumably, the thinking is that a smeared bed sheet will make Harry's happiest dreams come true instead of the <laughs> typical path of his happiest dreams leading to a smeared bed sheet. <laughs> the, the team talk in the locker room gets off to a slightly sexist start as Captain Wood refers to everyone as men, ignoring the fact that all three of his ball handling chasers are actually young women. The lack of gender awareness is matched by his limitations as an inspirational orator, as the Weasley twins already have the, his dull, cliched speech memorized from last year. The squad marches out to the roar of the crowd. Madame Hooch is obviously taking charge of the occasion and whistles everybody into the air. Lee Jordan is running the commentary, and unlike old Oliver, he's well aware that the Gryffindor girls have come to play. He takes his first opportunity to point out how very attractive Angelina is. Poor Jen. Professor McGonagall won't stand for such crass objectification and urges less colorful commentary and more part impartial play-by-play from Mr. Jordan. The open exchanges go back and forth with all the predictable ball flinging and beating and whacking and tight squeezes and scoring that one would expect. Harry stays well above the fray, continually searching for that special little ball, which brings every Quidditch match to a tri- its triumphant climax. <laughs> eventually, eventually, the shy snitch does indeed make an appearance, and all the peripheral, peripheral argy-bargy subsides as everyone focuses on Harry's intense, accelerated pursuit toward that prize. Everyone, that is, except for Captain Flint, the oafish Slytherin, not the notable pirate, who slams into quick little Harry in an illegal manner, preventing the maneuver from reaching completion. Thus, ca- This causes quite the outcry and leads to a penalty shot for Gryffindor. Soon thereafter, Harry starts to notice that his nimbus is acting rather peculiar, it's as if his wooden shaft has a mind of its own and is leading him in into a quite quite a spot of bother. His bewitched stick starts to twitch and move with, against his wishes. Harry grips it tightly with both hands and squeezes his knees together to try to prevent it from busting loose. The rogue equipment convulses and keeps rising uncontrollably. Frightened, Harry struggles to keep hold of it. The crowd gasps as the wild jerking continues. Harry now hangs precariously by one hand, completely open and vulnerable to the whims of some dominantly sadistic unseen agent. Hermione and Ron spot Snape ogling and mu- ogling Harry and muttering to himself. They decide that he is the one who is manipulating Harry's instrument in such a despicable way. 
Hermione rushes off and sneaks up on Snape. Luckily, in her haste and clumsiness, she markedly interrupts Professor Quirrell's match day activities. Upon reaching her target, she goes all KKK by combining fire robes and grand wizards in an attempt to stop the rise of dark powers. Snape is exposed as a liar liar. <laughs> Snape is, ex- <laughs> Snape is, ex- is exposed as a liar liar once he realizes his pants are on fire, and Hermione manages to sneak, sneak away once the deed is done. Back in the sky, Harry regains his self-control and promptly begins to going down with great haste and determination. After an odd sort of gulp and gurgle and a gag, Harry hits the ground on all fours and coughs up something into his hands. It turns out Harry was able to find the elusive snitch with his mouth, mouth and get the do- job done that way. Despite some futile arguments from the capacious Captain Flint about the merits and legality of catching, handling versus swallowing, Gryffindor are able to celebrate a historic and highly unusual victory. The gang concludes their afternoon with a debriefing session in Hagrid's hut. They recap Snape's perceived murder attempt, but Hagrid refuses to believe it. They share what they know about the three-headed dog, and Hagrid commences with some of his patented unintentional disclosures. These will become a recurring and invaluable source of information for the crew. On this occasion, they learn more about Fluffy and hear the name Nicholas Flamel. The end. Wow. Yes. Bravo, sir. Oh. I feel dirty. Yeah, that's how, that's how it yeah. goes. I'm crying. Uh, uh. I do have a question for the people that have read the international versions. In the American one, the sign they make says Potter for President. I'm assuming that says Potter for Prime Minister or something else in different countries. Yeah, I have the same question. And the China has knowledge of presidents. So it's Ch- it's I'd have Potter to check my book. I think it only occurred to me like this time around. I was like, wait a second. They don't have presidents in England? Well, I was actually also wondering the same thing, but it's in the last chapter. They say, um, they, Harry compares uh, the quaffle to basketball and um, the things you hit, the, the bats to baseball bats instead of like what what would the equivalent be football and uh, cricket? Uh, yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> they they call it they also call it soccer in my book. <laughs> okay. Just being just being politically correct here, Zach. <laughs> oh oh now we're being worried about being politically correct. <laughs> I believe I believe it's Pod a- made a KKK joke in the yeah. <laughs> chapter we read. I think we're way past the point of political correctness. Oh my god. I did not want love. It was made with love. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes all the difference. Oh man. Um, I had the same question actually, and I'm also like, how the hell did Harry swallow the snitch? With the snitch, how? Yeah, well, it's you open like your mouth. <laughs> but, but when? What do you yeah. mean? When did he get in it, there? It was weirdly written to be like so vague, like he wasn't trying to dive on it or reach for for this hand or whatever. Nicole, like, I would say he opened his mouth and it went in. <laughs> when? <laughs> yeah, they, as Paul says, happened. the description is vague, but I don't have trouble believing that it happened. I think it's it's reasonable. Or did someone else interfere and force it into his mouth? The ball yeah. is small. I missed I mean, that. I was talking to my to my brother and sister, and they were like, "Oh, well, maybe that was like maybe Quirrell was trying to choke him with the the thing." He was trying to gag him mean, with the ball. Yes, on a reg- on a daily basis, I wonder how I get balls in my mouth. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's between you and your balls. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, uh, when Hermione interrupts uh, Quirrell, and then she continues on, goes over to Snape, lights him on fire, and it says it took 30 seconds, and then he finally notices and stops. So wouldn't people notice that Harry didn't have any problems for like a minute in between? Uh, now, now if, we're, if we're doing this, here's the part that makes no sense. It feels like the game is only going on for about 30 seconds when Hagrid shows up, and he says that he was watching it from his hut with binoculars, and then he decided to come join. But how much of the game could he possibly have watched before he decided <laughs> to come over and watch with, with Ron and Hermione? It's it's It's, it's probably just weirdly, weirdly yeah. edited and left out. Yeah, the timing on everything is, is odd. Also, it's still Hermione, a lot of fun. Yeah, also, as we nitpick, Hermione says, I mean, I guess she can do this, but she scoops the fire back into the jar. How does she touch it if it's fire? I 
thought that magic. was like with her wand. Like she just. I guess so. Magic. It's like a shovel. To magics. Mm. Any other thoughts? Anybody like Quidditch? Anybody not like Quidditch? I like. Uh, I mean, Quidditch is fun, but it's so easy to say. Like the the, the games are are so always so bizarre. The other one in this in this book we get is like it ends immediately. This one, yep. it's not really focused on the game itself. It's focused on on Harry being bucked around on on his broom. I don't know. It just never feels like it lives up to the expectation. Most of the Quidditch matches that we get in detail are always focused on Harry. Either he falls off the broom, or somebody's trying to get him off, or, you know... Mm-hmm. Who's the mentors? Yeah, Harry. Some other yeah. weird stuff. Or it's Dobby. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe I it's... tend to... Like, in rereads, generally, I tend to skip the, the, the Quidditch chapters unless there's something else happening in them. Like, Aww. I, I'm not really, <laughs> like... That's... It's... I mean, it's, it's fine. Like, sometimes, like... Sometimes Lee Jordan will will make a funny comment or something like that, you know, when he's. <laughs> but that's that's um, mostly, you know, the the rest of it is it's basically like a a, a wizard equivalent for football or yeah. soccer, you know. So it's and jo- not, yeah, Johnson to to et cetera, like just passing and passing, and that's pretty much the the bulk of the description. Yeah, I mean, I'm not that invested in in. I mean, if when when there's this big mystery about, you know, who is trying to steal something that we don't know about. Um, it, I mean, that's guided by a three-headed dog. I'm more invested in that than to find out, you know, who wins the Quidditch match. Let's be real. Well, I also don't... Yeah, but I mean... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, like, what the fuck is that? How easy is it to fix a Quidditch game if, like, you could just be like, I'm going to, like, fuck up that guy's broom with a spell. Like, shouldn't there be some kind of, like, protection, no cheating charm or something like that? Well, I'm sure there is does say that it's very hard to interfere with, with a broomstick normally. Nobody make a joke, please. Well, yeah, and Quiller is the a dog wizard. So. I'm assuming he knows some special dog magic thing. I'm just wondering why there was no official inquiry as to as to the nature of this this disturbance. Why did no one give a damn after it happened? Yeah. Well, they might just think because that the, it's it's the broom it's it's the broom itself that might have malfunctioned in a in a moment of. I mean, I don't know. It, they could probably yeah, explain my, it away like that. You know, it's probably a temporary problem. McGonagall wouldn't buy him a broom that would fuck up. She knows that. She's smart enough. She should have looked into it. I wonder how much of a sports oh, fan J.K. Dumbledore really should have looked into that. Actually, Dumbledore yeah, doesn't something care. I wanted to talk about at the end of the book, but you know, Snape obviously knows that it's Quirrell who's doing everything right, who's looking for the stone. So if if Snape knows, then obviously Dumbledore knows. Um, so then why didn't they sort of try to flush him out sooner or something? No proof. It's Dumbledore is crazy. Proof. He wanted <laughs> Harry to go down there. Yeah, Dumbledore sets up <laughs> Harry to take does. care of everything. Lack of proof, I would say. It's probably okay, the so most likely thing. Like, Snape has a suspicion. Right? Snape has a suspicion. He doesn't know, He doesn't have any concrete evidence that, you know, that his suspicions are actually true. No, because in Half-Blood Prince or... Deathly Hollows, he goes into the pensive and Dumbledore's like, hey, uh, make sure you keep an eye on Quirrell. Uh, we're full spoiler. To, to Snape. <laughs> What's that? We're full spoiler, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're not and... spoiled, you don't know what a pensive is, so. <laughs> but I, I mean, I honestly think that, like, Quidditch is almost never actually about Quidditch. It's usually about, mm-hmm. like, getting the plot moving and character yeah. stuff. Mm. Except yeah. for the Quidditch World Cup, that's literally about Quidditch. Yeah, but <laughs> no, it's yeah. like, hey, let's meet yeah. all well, these wacky foreigners yes. <laughs> who are gonna like be part yes. of. This. Also, sets up think, the whole plot yes, of that book. Yes, I think we should avoid talking about future books for people who have not yet read them, or who might who might decide to listen. Maybe we should probably, I think, like, you know. Small references are. Cool. I think Greg is the only person, who the only person on Earth. Harry Potter, and he's <laughs> the only one, literally. Yeah. Yeah. Who am I kidding? <laughs> so, do you think J.K. Rowling is actually like a sports fan, or she just uh, thought this was a weird thing to move the plot along, like Michal says? It seems she like she didn't give it too much thought. 
It was just well, kind of she's, she's, in the, she's in the soccer, right, or football? Yeah, she 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 knows what a West Ham United is. Who else on this podcast knows what a West Ham United is? I bet I you do. do. I, I do. Guessing an English I soccer team? Yes, yeah, Paul. Sorry, I forgot. You also care. I, <laughs> I, I, I bet that kind of ham is delicious. <laughs> the West Ham. Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. He can't even joke about it. He's like, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, just no. Whatever. So are you saying thing that like the Rockies of football? More like, well, I mean, the problem is... American sports doesn't share the, the 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 history of hooliganism as English sports. Nah. Yeah, so, they were good a long time ago. Then they were known for just being very violent and uh, rowdy at other times. And now there's yeah. kind of a mid-table team. Except uh, this coming season, they're taking over the unused Olympic Stadium, so it'll be kind of a big deal. Yes. Oh my God! You just nerded all over me. <laughs> In a way. <laughs> all right. Gross. Delicious. Sorry. Just swallow. Shut up, Matt. <laughs> I, I think we're done with this chapter. Yeah, okay. Um, um, Chris, when, uh... you first, when you first heard about Nicholas Flamel, did you know the historical figure, or did you wait to find that out later? When I was a kid, I didn't know who that was. Yeah, not the first time I read it. I, I mean, I was about 10 when I heard it first, so I, wasn't really sh- I, I didn't really know who that was. But, yeah. Now it's, it seems like that's kind of obvious, something that you could sort of look up if you're an adult reading these books but or if you I mean if you're an adult you already know that sort of stuff probably you know, I don't know the yeah, it, I mean, are you trying to, are you trying to tell me that n- no other adults are into the dark arts or alchemy or that sort of thing is that not a normal thing that people that people research on a daily basis there are all kinds oh, of nerds like oh uh, probably I love the dark arts. <laughs> I think yeah. they practice them at the uh, Denver airport, right? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Illuminati. Oh my god. Anyway. Still got. <laughs> yeah. Let's get back to the top. This <laughs> like so, yeah. Uh, we are we are moving on to um, yeah chapter. Oh, I'm sorry. That was chapter 11 we just did. Chapter 12, The Mirror of Erised, which is one of my favorite chapters. So take it away, Marley. <clears throat> All right. So uh, Christmas is coming, and Malfoy is the worst. Um, he teases Harry for not being able to go home because he doesn't have parents. Harry's actually psyched that he doesn't have to spend time with the Dursleys, and also that uh, apparently Ron's parents went to go visit Charlie in Romania. For the yep. Christmas, so all the Weasley kids are... I think it's Hungarian. At, uh, <laughs> not even a play. <laughs> so they... Nice. So they're looking for information on Nicholas Fennell. They can't find it. Um, Christmas finally comes, and Harry and Ron awaken the presents. Uh, Ron's mom did Harry a ugly-ass sweater along with all our other children. Um, Harry also receives a mysterious package that contains his father's invisibility cloak. So uh, Harry tries on the co- a cloak, and he figures it would be good to go into the restricted section and get a book on Nicholas Fennell, but uh, one of the books like uh, starts screaming, so that draws uh, uh, Filch and what's-his-name Snape over... Um, he tries to evade them and dips into a room where he finds this big mirror that of Erised, which is just desire spelled backwards. Um, and across the top of the mirror, it, it, it says, what, I reflect not your face, but your heart's uh, greatest desire, or something I, like I that. I show not your face, but your heart's desire. Okay. You see? Greg, oh. Greg was like, oh, is there like a language that they use in Harry Potter, like like Erised? And I was like, no. That's all backwards. <laughs> Um, so uh, he looks into the mirror and himself, but he also sees two people behind him. Uh, it, it turns out that it's his mother and father. So he keeps on uh, take, just looking into the mirror. He tells uh, Ron. Ron is unimpressed and doesn't really want to see Harry's parents. Um, so when Ron looks in the mirror, he actually sees him being a head boy and winning the house cup. Um, so Harry keeps on going back night after night until one day he's 
looking into it and realizes that Albus Dumbledore is in the room too. Uh, Al- Albus tells him what the mirror is and that he's going to hide it and he suggests that Harry does not uh, try to find it. Um, Harry's leaving and he asks Dumbledore what uh, Dumbledore sees when he looks in the mirror and Dumbledore says a nice pair of wool socks and Harry doesn't think uh, Dumbledore was telling the truth because he thinks he's probably sees his sister. That's what he thinks at the time. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, six books too early. He's like, Dumbledore definitely had a sister. Uh, I love this chapter. I think the depiction of Harry's grief is so moving and beautiful and sad. It is so sad. And she, she doesn't really explain it, like, in terms of, like, she's not, like, you know, Harry's parents had died when he was little, and he never knew them, and, and, you know, now he's seeing his whole family. She's just kind of, like, he was, like, frozen seeing them, and just the way she kind of describes that emotional experience is really mm-hmm. moving to me. How else would she describe it, though? She'd been like, Harry misses his mommy. <laughs> Harry misses his mommy. Yeah, but it could have been just so like much that. more melodramatic, but it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a little melodramatic. He, like, stops eating, and, is, and the, the idea is that he's going to slowly, I guess, deny himself everything and just keep going back until he wastes away, but and then double yeah. conversation. But, but, I mean, I love it. i ever seen an Indian soap opera. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I, I love this chapter as well. It's also, besides the, all the great Mirror of Era said stuff, it's also the first of many wonderful Christmas chapters, which are which are always really fun and really just getting into the to the spirit of that. And I think the one in this chap in this book is probably the best. Just Harry finally getting that that wonderful holiday moment with with friends that he was denied for for his whole life. And up presents. To this. Yeah, and presents always good. And also one of my favorite quotes. Um, I can't remember it exactly, but it's the, uh, it's the, um, it's the, we know who we are. We know we're called Gred and Forge. I just, I love that <laughs> moment with, uh, with Fred and Dredge. It's just so off the cuff and, and hilarious. Wait, what? When they're, when they're saying, like, that, that they have to, uh, she, ah, Molly Weasley is explaining that, that, uh, who, who gets which sweater and they're saying, oh, you don't have to have that because, she assumes that we don't remember which is which, and we know who we are. We're Gred and Forge. Yeah, because Ron didn't have a letter on his sweater, and Fred and George did, and so they're like, oh, it's so we don't remember that we're those names. <laughs> Very funny. Hilarious. <laughs> I think we also find out that Hermione's uh, parents are dentists in this chapter, which is just a detail. Which is super I important to the I story. Appreciate. <laughs> And I, this is also the first time we get a, our first conversation between Harry and Dumbledore, which mm-hmm. is, you know, the first of several. Oh, yeah. um, Very true. I think she writes Dumbledore so well. <laughs> like, yeah. I was just like, you know, I feel like, honestly, the the writing just rises to a different level the second Dumbledore comes on scene, you know? I agree for sure. Just every moment in in this book in particular is meaningful, and it, it definitely elevates the story and also the experience of Harry's development as a character. Yeah, yeah. It's it's I it's love, also like I love the, it says you know nobody ever gives me socks. Everybody keeps on giving me books. <laughs> yeah, he's he's funny and also hmm. also. I and he'll know. surprise you both ways. Like he'll surprise you by saying something incredibly deep. And then he'll surprise you by saying something incredibly like Dumbledore, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so how about the decision? Oh, no. No, no. no. Okay. So what do you think? I mean, what do you think you would have seen in the mirror then? Oh. Yeah. Tough question. That's a heated question. <laughs> hmm. I don't know if I want to say. <laughs> socks. A pair of socks. socks. I would say so- I actually do love yes. socks. Mm. <laughs> the completed bomb. The completed <laughs> set of uh, Song of Ice and Fire. Oh, that's what we're oh, all. Yeah. 
<laughs> and it's just me reading it and just like my head is exploding and just I mouth my reflection mouths back. Oh, you won't believe this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then you punch the mirror. Yeah, then I go into the mirror and strangle the bastard and thinks he's doing <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I definitely think that there are a lot of characters in A Song of Ice and Fire who would see important things in the narrative ourselves. <laughs> yeah, and then they'd realize that it's actually not going to happen, so it uh, makes it... <laughs> Tyrion looks in the mirror, barely recognizes the person, and then it turns out it's him if he wasn't a dwarf and very ugly. Oh. Yeah. It turns out, Jamie. turns out, Turns out, in fact, he looks like Jamie in the mirror. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, that Head cannon. Oh, <laughs> oh Rhaegar. And now I'm sad. Yeah, Rhaegar, his brother. I think I think the interesting thing about the mirror of Arisid also is that like you don't necessarily know, you know. Like, I, Harry, at that point, it was obviously not like, oh, I really w miss my family, you know? The family I never knew. It's yeah, does it see beyond your conscious mind of what you actually have in your heart or whatever? Or? It must. Apparently. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're just, like, feeling, like, really hungry, I doubt, like, it's just gonna, like, show you a sandwich and you'll be like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my sandwich. Um, but, it's I mean... the that, room of requirement that does that. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. That's the thing. It reminds me of um, the uh, film, The Never Ending Story. There's a moment where um, the old gnome actually says something about, you know, if you know, if if you go through that, through. I mean, if you go through that portal, like you might, you might actually find out that what you see is not really what. I mean, it, that you that the real reflection of your true self might actually. Um, cause you to get to get mad or to to get sad and that sort of thing so it's like you might not i mean you might not r realize before you look into it what kind of person you are so it could act i mean i i, I always thought that maybe the mirror reveals something about yourself like as a person like if you if you think you're a good person but turns out that subconsciously you are probably um less less virtuous than you think you are so it's it's, it's always possible right I mean, it's nothing that says that there's no unconscious desires that I revealed, right? Yeah, I mean, I think I think that definitely could be. I, th I think the mirror is dangerous for that reason, but also for the reason that Dumbledore says, which is that like people will always kind of try and get that thing through the 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 mode that seems most obvious to them, which would be the mirror, you know, and and it's not possible to get it through the mirror. So if if Ron's like truly his heart's desire like is to wouldn't shouldn't he be in Slytherin with all that ambition? I don't I don't think he's at, he actually wants those things. It's, well, it's more that he wants to be the most notable of his brothers. I mean, there is the th yeah, he wants to get out of the shadow of his brothers. Yeah, he's kind of selfish, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, so wouldn't like, you think that would be, like, ambition that's, like, sixth, worthy of Slytherin? He's the sixth child. I don't think it's, you know, that, that's surprising. Yeah, agreed. I think it makes sense. No, I'm not... No, I'm not saying it's it's uh, it's I'm not saying it's not surprising. It's it's just that the idea that you know you would wish for that over everything else in life. Um, I mean, I understand he's like a see, like an Ron eleven year old kid. A, Ron comes from a very like comfortable family, right? His parents love him. His siblings love him. Everything's. I mean, they're poor, but other than that, you know, everything's fine. So. Obviously, yeah, his, most important his, his thing. desire is not going to be as deep and profound as Harry's, his, who's lost his parents. He doesn't have a family. He's been abused emotionally for a long time. Yeah, agreed. And I think so that's th an interesting contrast, right? Like, when you get to Harry and Ron, and, like, I love Ron, you know, and I don't think it's by any means his fault that he that's what he sees in the mirror of Arisa. It make, totally, make, totally makes sense, but, like, you do compare it to, like, Harry like you said, Nani, really being abused for a lot of his life, and then it's like, <laughs> you know, 
my brothers are a little mean to me sometimes, you know. Yeah, that's a kind of it seems <laughs> it pale it seems to pale in comparison. Yeah. Um, which I mean, which is like everything. Th everything see, near the thing is, first he's upstaged by his brothers. First he's upstaged by his brothers, and then his best friends are like Harry Potter and Hermione Granger. One is like the smartest person in the world, and the other right. is the boy who lives. That's but that's Ron's whole sort of arc, right? Is that he is the he is the the second fiddle, I suppose, like the the guy who's always yeah. behind yeah, the exactly. third Ron fiddle, is, which third fiddle. His brothers, <laughs> other than Percy, are like super cool. So, you know, it's, it's understandable. He, there's, like, a, I mean, it's understandable. It's just, like, it's not really, like, there's a lot of resentment that, that actually, you know, if you if you were, if you're thinking about it for a longer, t for a longer time, you might actually come to, come to realize, yeah, maybe it's a, it's a bit overblown, like, the, re the reaction, like, in comparison to what my best friend had to go through, like, you know, that sort of thing. It's, it's. I mean, it's it's understandable. It's just that to me, it feels still a bit petty in a way. It's it's not really um, like. Well, he's he, Dumbledore. Wants yeah, to yeah. So. <laughs> no, of course, but he's he, yeah. That's why he says. That's why he says. But we we don't know what what he sees, so we can't really see what he sees. So. Yeah, but I mean, I think that something that Rowling does really nicely is that she doesn't actually pit like Ron's unhappiness against Harry's. You know. Like, there are points of comparison, but it's not, like, you know... I mean, there are multiple times throughout the series where, like, we really do feel for Ron, you know, in, in what he lacks in his life. So I don't think it's, like, the point is to be, like, you know, stop bitching Ron, you know? No, no, of course well, not. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, like, it's, you know, they, they're still... Um, you know, you can still call him out for, you know... Like, he should he should be happy that he has a... Uh, you know, a big, a big family who who might be able to, who who's there to support him emotionally if he is in trouble. You know, and that sort of thing. So it, it's actually that, you know, there's, there's, a, there's no, an upside to everything. Right. There's a, yeah, I, of course, there's, there's an upside to everything. Is what I'm saying. You know, it's it's just that you know, um, yeah, the, the wish that Harry makes it so much more like. I mean, it it, it doesn't feel like. Um, it it comes out of a place of resentment. Is what I'm saying. That's all it is. I think in a cold logical way I would agree with you, but I just on the an emotional level, like I, I totally sympathize with, with Ron's reaction here and his his experience in, in wanting to be in wanting to be, be more than he is and wanting to, to not be con constantly overshadowed. I think that's a, a completely reasonable human response and I, I don't judge him remotely for that. Well he has a he, great line in one of the future books where I think he gets his new owl and the owl's like a spaz. He's like and he just says something it like just off the cuff, he's like, "Why does everything I own have to be rubbish?" And it's like one of those lines that always hit me, like, "Oh, buddy!" <laughs> like, yeah, I think it's. Oh, and you know. Ron's been wearing like hand me downs all his life. Yeah, he get tired of that. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah, I love. And that. he's always wearing robes that are too short for him. It's you know, that's pretty easy for ki other kids to make fun of. Or his uh, evening wear and uh, God of the Fire. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that was dead. The, yeah, and what do we think about Dumbledore's decision to keep giving Harry his uh, cloak of invisibility to ha have his run of the castle? Do we know that yet at this point? No. Well, we don't know it's from him, but we know he gets it. <laughs> okay. Future chapters. I guess we'll wait to discuss it till later. I mean, about how Lord that's kind of a. Control. <laughs> I know we, yeah. <laughs> we just we have like we we've discussed who the main villain is already, so it's not doesn't really make much sense to give it a secret. <laughs> but it's a, yeah, I mean, um, the only thing that I would say is that I you know, um, I take what Dumbledore says like at, at the I mean you can see where she's going with the character at the end of this book, right? Um, with Dumbledore, she sort of like. Um, in this in this circumstance, he doesn't tell Harry what he what he actually knows about the the cloak, right? He only tells him once he asks him, but he doesn't really come forward with with that kind of information. And I don't know exactly why that is. No, um, we'll get to it. And it's interesting in that in that final chapter where he talks about how he won't lie to Harry, but I think he's he's pretty clearly lying to Harry here in this chapter. Yeah, so. like immediately. I'm not sure what the point of that was. Um. Maybe that will get answered eventually. Maybe. <laughs> in, in like 
book five or whatever, book seven or whatever, who knows? Um, but yeah. I feel like we should move it, on because yeah, we have a lot I, uh, of Yeah, how many trips? Yeah. Oh, me, yes. Nicholas Romel. Uh, yeah, uh, I completely forgot this chapter existed before we started this reread. So, uh, Harry fin- decides to finally stop staring at a mirror. Hello? Yeah, we're here. Okay, go We hear you. Good. All right, so yeah, Harry stops staring at the mirror, but still hasn't figured out who the fuck Nicholas Vermeule is. And then Wood, Mr. Oliver Wood, tells Gryffindor that Snape is now refing the next game. Hermione recommends faking injury. Ron recommends actual injury. Neville gets bullied by Malfoy again. Uh, Harry gives him a chocolate frog. And then remember that Flamel is Dumbledore's BFF under on those shitty cards that they give out. Yeah. And and then Hermione then conjures a book out of nowhere and then found out that Nicholas Flamel is some geezer over 600 years old and has created the Philosopher and the Sorcerer's Stone. Which then the gang decides was the thing that's being guarded by the dog. And then Quidditch happens, but it doesn't matter because it's, it's over, over five, in five minutes. Make your own premature ejaculation jokes there, Paul. Carry and on. then, and yeah, and then while that's happening, Ryan Malfoy showed a passion for the game in good old British way through some hardcore hooliganism. And while he's celebrating Gryffindor's win, and Harry found Snape being threatening to curl about something. Yeah. Yeah, it's, well, it's yeah. not much. It's 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 more like an exposition chapter, right? Mm-hmm. There's not much else yep. to be it's said. Just about. advancing the plot, yep, setting up. Basically, not, not much. Hence, why I forgot it existed. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice that you get like little elements, like the frogs, like at the beginning of the of the book, and then sort of like they come back to be useful, like oh, stuff uh, that sort of thing. Around. She's really economical yeah. with the stuff that she plants. Yeah. It's it's like it's just a, it's, it, it would be such a random thing, right? It's such something something where you would say, um, I I would never like if I had to write it, I would never really think to put it to put the vital information on such an insignificant like detail that was mentioned like off off the cuff, like it's not really. Um, but yeah, she she manages to do that repeatedly in the books, so that's 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 definitely some good writing. Too, because she's also not like, like nobody reads the description out loud, you know. It's just like mm. something that the reader reads through Harry, you know. Right. Um, I mean, one thing, one thing that she she uh, minds even deeper is the I didn't mention this in a in a, in the recap, but she Harry thinks Snape can read his mind. Yes, I remember that line. <laughs> I was like, ah. I mean, this yeah. chapter, I mean, this whole book, I, I don't know what the process was with, like, if it was pulling stuff from this book or stuff was actually planned from the outset, but there's a ton of things that end up being meaningful in later books in right. this book. Hang on. Yeah, I'm what? Some background. I think we are leaving tomorrow. Are we, though? <laughs> I think so. McCall, are we leaving tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Do you have your driver's license yet? Oh, uh, come on. Oh, uh, burn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bop, 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 bop. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I do, I do actually like how, like, the rules, not the rules, but the, the events of Quidditch can really just do whatever she wants and like wizards are totally fine with their sport just being completely irregulated and messed up you know yep it's also yeah. a horrible it's a horrible spectator sport it can just be over in five minutes yeah right just but they're fine just, with that like they don't care just like FIFA in real life <laughs> <laughs> yeah but then, then this requires more corruption than bribing going on well maybe that's yeah. how it became rough <laughs> yeah probably I just always like in in my head a referee wears like a striped shirt and like whatever, so that is what Snape is wearing in my head in this chapter. And it's, it's hilarious and undignified. Won't yeah, be the last time. 
I mean, if they just kind of allow just a bunch of random shit anyway in the game, why even have the referee? Just to say, oh, they scored a point. Probably. Do we well, get, in any of the other books with all the shit that goes down during Quidditch, do we ever get another penalty shot? Yeah, I think so. Lots of times. Probably. I don't remember. Yeah. Isn't there like yeah, a yeah, big one with, uh, with book six? Every time there's a foul, the other team gets a penalty. I think it doesn't, f- doesn't Flint at some point, like, um, like does he, knock, does he not knock off Angelina off her broom at some point? Like, I don't know. Is it, oh, is it in book two? Probably. probably. It's probably yeah. in book two. Or something like that. Light on. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he yeah. expelled Even at some does... point? Or like, or no, no, no he, he, got, he gets, he gets, he gets somewhere. Stuck. I mean, he got lost somewhere, like, for a yeah. week or something. Yeah, know, he uh, gets stuck in the vanity cabinet, right? In between worlds or whatever? Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, something, oh, something Also foreshadowing. Oh, ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I do like mm. the thing in the first Quidditch chapter where it's like, everyone's watching Harry and it's like, Marcus... And Marcus Flint sees the quaffle and scored five times without anyone noticing. <laughs> and then, yeah, just and doing they it. count. <laughs> Those goals count. <laughs> this game makes no sense. They don't matter. They count, but they don't matter because catching the snitch is all that matters it's in this game. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, about the, it's about the randomness, randomness of sport. It's a, it's a social commentary. That's how I choose to read it. <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah. That's why I choose not to read it. Hmm. <laughs> Nadia, you want to take us away with Norbert, the Norwegian Ridgeback, and other, or otherwise known as shit, really starts to hit the fan. Also oh, yeah. Okay. Damn it, Hagrid. <laughs> okay, so Harry and company spend the next few weeks expecting Quirrell to give in to Snape's demands, but he surprises them by resisting. Hermione, by now, is obsessed with revision, and she tries to make Harry and Ron do the same. So on one particularly fine day, they're catching up on homework in the library when they see a very shifty Hagrid trying to hide something behind his back. The trio tries to question him about what's protecting the stone other than Fluffy. He doesn't give anything up, but he invites them to his heart just so they'll stop talking about him in public with anyone can hear them. They keep wondering about what he has behind his back, and surprisingly it's Ron who realizes, you know, we should just see what section he was in. So Ron gets up and sees that he was in the dragon section and then he drops a major knowledge about dragon breeding uh, with dates and everything. Mm, They go to see Hagrid and unsurprisingly he spills everything he knows about the stone's protection. A number of teachers including Snape have cast enchantments. Harry is worried, uh, obviously, that Hagrid might have told someone how to get past Fluffy but Hagrid swears he hasn't. He has just won a dragon off a hooded stranger in a very seedy bar. Ron and Hermione bigger loudly about when to go see it, um, uh, when to go see the dragon hatch, and uh, Draco Malfoy overhears. So when they're watching the dragon hatch, Hagrid is immediately smitten uh, with his baby, but not enough to miss Draco spying through the window. Harry, Ron, and Hermione freak out and eventually convince Hagrid to send Norbert to Charlie Weasley, who's a dragon keeper in Romania. Ron gets bitten by Norbert and has to go to the hospital wing. Draco pretends he wants to get a book from Ron, but really he was just there to make fun of Ron, and he threatens to tell Madame Pomfrey what actually bit him. To keep up appearances, Draco takes a book from Ron when he leaves. Unfortunately, Ron being the smart person he is, he gave him the same book in which he put Charlie's letter. The same one in which Charlie mentioned the time his friends were going to collect Norbert from the astronomy tower. When Harry and Hermione are sneaking Norbert to the, uh, to the tower, they hear McGonag- Professor McGonagall find Draco lurking near the tower. Draco tries to tell her that Harry is coming with the dragon, but he just gets attention for his trouble. Um, Harry and Hermione are very excited about Draco's detention, and they run up the tower, send Norbert off safely, and then immediately run back down. But Filch finds them because they have left the invisibility cloak at the top of the tower. Ron was just playing a really long game here. Uh, Ron was just playing. A, yeah, he wanted the, he wanted Malfoy to get caught, but his dumb friends didn't take the invisibility cloak. They ruined the whole plan. Ron's the smartest character in the group, obviously. <laughs> But seriously, Ron, Ron seems to know about a lot about dragons. 
That's true, he does. Well, Charlie is his brother, right? Charlie, do you have yeah, yeah, dates about, you know, when they had conventions about dragon breeding. It was, it was surprising. Charlie talks in his sleep. <laughs> also, I'll gross. easily share a bet. There's that, that for. No. Maybe he hears them across the room, guys. <laughs> he, sorry, he yells in his sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I had so, a I had a weird thought here. Like, why? How are they able to get to the North Tower? That Charlie and his or Charlie's friends. Like, what kind of security does <laughs> Hogwarts have? Because I thought it was like this elaborate, like spells and everything. But they're just able to come through and get the dragon and leave. They have a flying car, I think. Well, they're flying, right? It's broomsticks can come in. Yeah, yeah you just can't have app- it against broomsticks. <laughs> Shut up, Paul. You know, I thought. Yeah, Which you're one? actually right. They're not protected. That must be actually. That actually makes sense because they didn't. App- Why wouldn't they just apparate in and out, right? Because it's Hogwarts. Well, that's she the thing. Knows. Uh, Dumbledore also like you know he's like going to London yeah. and then it's like but he could just pop back. Oh no, he can't. So Dumbledore should just be able to disable it for himself, like he always does. But <laughs> <laughs> got like a garage door opener that just turns it off for a second. <laughs> the put outer for Hogwarts. The lights, the lights blink on and off when he locks it back up. <laughs> no, I just found it strange because of what I think it's in either book book six or book seven where. Uh, they describe how like all these charms are set all over Hogwarts, unless it's just for that point that I'm just like confusing yeah. it with. Yeah, when they need like super security. Yeah, they're certainly yeah. at they high alert then. Security. Yeah, they tighten security later. Okay. Comes back. <laughs> Spoilers. Right. Spoilers. Well, I mean, <laughs> even in Prisoner of Azkaban, like with all the Dementors, like it still doesn't keep Sirius Black out, right? Yeah. He knows all the secrets. Hmm. Um, so when you misplace an invisibility cloak, how long does that take to find? Yeah, seriously. It's not invisible when it's not on something, right? How yeah, long? you can right. see it shimmering. Mm. But like, it's funny that Filch was like, "Oh, I," you know, kind of immediately connected it. Well, I guess he went just went down and was like, "Oh, who is it?" But if I were him, I'd be like, "How did the Weasley twins get an invisibility cloak?" You know. Because obviously it's the Weasley Twins. Oh, for sure. Uh, mischief is being managed. Yeah. Is anyone else a little creeped out by the way Hagrid acts around Norbert? Yeah. Not mm-hmm. only because I probably act that way around my cat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't really seem to care for the well-being of the kids or other things. More so just the dragon can do no wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, it's the same I find you know, it. Right? Like, he's super bu- buddies with the creepy spider, you know. Aragog? Yeah. Yep. Aragog. Yeah. Aggard, that's who he is. I find it a little weird, though, that he didn't, like, take responsibility for this whole fiasco. I guess he would have been fired, but probably not, because Dumbledore, but he just lets them get punished. I don't know. It's kind of, it's a little weird, but not each thing. Well, I don't think yeah, but then he, the... he goes on to manage, like, their punishment, right? They, their punishment is... Barely. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, Barely. He does not approve. <laughs> and as the groundskeeper and thing, wouldn't he be allowed to just walk around with a box and just bring uh, the dragon wherever he wanted without them doing it? I don't think they trusted him to actually follow through. He would keep it, just hide it. Yeah, yeah. I'll just put it in the forest. Everything else seems to be fine in there. <laughs> <laughs> My brother will be able to pet it later. I don't think Hagrid was exactly planning for the future. Yeah. No. What? He Hagrid being ill prepared for the future? It, I don't it, see that. It's happening. clear that Hagrid. <laughs> They tried to, Hermione tried to explain to him, you know, you live in a wooden house and you're trying to raise a dragon. And he's just humming to it. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, baby. Yeah. I wonder what other stuff Hagrid has won and lost in card random card games that this was so normal for him. <laughs> I like the fact that he, he can just go out to the bar and, like, come home with a dragon's egg. 
Probably planned it. Yeah, Daenerys had to marry a warlord for that to happen. Yeah. Now I'm just kind of picturing, like, the shady character, and it's just Daenerys with a hood over her head. <laughs> Fuck! What am I going to do now? That was my last dragon egg. <laughs> oh, man. So... I'm surprised, yeah. I'm surprised Norbert right. never came back from the two-story. It's Norbetta, right? No, well, yeah, well, yeah, right. eventually. Yeah. That's all we get. Um... How, here's the thing about this strange person, I guess, is how did Hagrid not recognize this person? If it was Quirrell? just, like, Quirrell? Yeah, I, I don't know. Well, he said that they don't take their hat off. They didn't take their hood off. He, he said he was super accent. drunk, also. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah and maybe he just Hagrid. didn't stutter, so he was like, no. Oh. not so smart, Hagrid. I'm, I'm, I get it, I get it. I shouldn't try to make sense of Hagrid's actions. <laughs> they don't make sense. They don't. <laughs> Poor Hagrid. <laughs> I'm sure Hagrid was just so focused on the dragon egg that he just wasn't even, he didn't ki- give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. Like somebody was like, dragon? And he was like, dragon? 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 <laughs> dragon? Dragon. Where are his Dorgon. dragons? Where are his dragons? Singular. It's in Romania. <laughs> it's fine. It's released into the wild. All right, so we'll the, let the Romanians deal with that. Exactly. <laughs> Hungarians. The Romanians come back eventually. <laughs> They're like, we're really pissed about that particular dragon. Why the fuck do you guys keep sending dragons to us? This isn't funny anymore. <laughs> yeah, seriously. We do, Romanians we do also like, learn. Oh. We do learn that there's dragons running around England, probably killing everybody, but they just keep wiping everybody's minds. So it's, it's okay. It's the men in black got it. Oh, covered. wizards. You assholes. Uh, yeah, and all the mountaineering deaths are due to dragons, right? Or, no, giants. Giants, but but people do are killed by dragons, too. Uh, all right, Casey, you want to take us away with the... Uh, I keep saying that. Do you want to read your synopsis <laughs> for the Forbidden Forest? <laughs> so formal. <laughs> I'm pretty right. to be, like, on radio. Yeah. Take it away, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, it's actually a little long. I apologize in advance. Um, oh, don't apologize. Good wording. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This chapter starts off with the quote: "Things couldn't have been worse." Of course, later on in this series, we'll find that things can get much, much worse. Harry and Hermione are led by Filch to Professor McGonagall, and McGonagall has—he's uh, also she's also caught Neville who is trying to find Harry and Hermione to warn them. McGonagall is furious with the four of them and deducts 50 points per person from Gryffindor, which takes them out of the lead of the House Cup. The next day, rumor spreads that Harry is the one responsible for the lost points. Unless you're a Slytherin, everybody hated Harry. Um, He felt so bad, he tried to resign from Quidditch, but Wood desperately needed someone with a hand like Harry's to get (laughs) get the job. I can't do it. <laughs> Wait, did I miss something? It's good to enjoy what you do. <laughs> Casey told a joke that was funny only to her. Yep. I stay goals. standing. <laughs> the wind, the wind. Um. <laughs> All right. Wood desperately needed someone with a hand like Harry's to get the job done and win those points back. But even at practice, he was cock-blocked by the rest of the team. And that's all the fun things I have <laughs> for this chapter. Ah, cocks. Yeah, I know. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. About a week before exams, Harry was minding his own business when he heard a threatening sound or a threatened sounding Professor Quirrell. Harry looks around and inside the classroom Quirrell was in and it's empty and he goes back to tell Hermione and Ron about it and they all agree that it has to be Snape. Uh, They discuss what they should do and they they decide to keep the information to themselves for now. Um, Like Dumbledore's here so it's fine. Yeah, it's all good. (laughs) He wouldn't let security get lax or anything. No, he's not. Now, children, go off to the murder forest for your (laughs) detention. (laughs) Right? (laughs) As opposed to the murder castle. (laughs) 
That's a different the podcast. Next... <laughs> the next day, Harry, Hermione, and Neville find out they're finally having the detention at 11 p.m., which for some reason it seems like taking time out of children's sleep instead of their free time is much better. 11 p.m. arrives, and the trio are joined by Malfoy and Hagrid, and for some reason taking 11-year-olds out into the dead of night into a scary forest and not bringing them back until dawn is totally okay and not a school liability. Hagrid almost immediately points out that the shiny stuff on the ground is unicorn blood and that there's been um, one badly hurt and they need to find it. Hagrid then has the great idea to split up the kids because that would... um, Find it faster! (laughs) (laughs) Because what would detention be without some danger? And Harry and Hermione go with Hagrid and Neville and Draco head off with Fag. Poor, poor Neville. Harry, Hermione... Draco? Yes. Draco Noir. Draco Malfoy. Draco Malfoy. (laughs) I needed to switch it up. (laughs) Gotta mix it up sometimes. (laughs) Harry, Hermione, and Hagrid continue on their path, and a centaur shows up named... Is it Ronan? (laughs) Or is it Ronan? (laughs) Ronan. Hmm. (laughs) And Bonnie. Is it Ronan? Like, what is it? I think it's Ronan. French centaur. It's Ronan. The the R, the N, and the I are silent. (laughs) Alright, his name's Ronan, and he remarks that Mars is bright tonight and that the forest hides many secrets. Another centaur named Bane joins them, and he gives the same remarks when asked about the unicorn deaths. The three of them continue on until they see red sparks in the sky from Neville and uh, and Malfoy. Uh, Hagrid decides it's okay to leave the two of them alone in the forest and goes to check on them uh, to find that Malfoy played a joke on Neville and scared him. Hagrid splits up the four of them again, this time Hermione and Neville with Hagrid and Harry and Malfoy with Fang. Harry and Malfoy end up finding the dead unicorn, which... Harry remarks that he had never seen anything so beautiful and sad. A hooded figure then appears out of nowhere, and it starts to drink the unicorn's blood, which sends Malfoy running and screaming. The hooded figure looks up at Harry and starts to move toward him. Harry's scar begins to hurt like it never had before, and he is saved by another blue-eyed centaur named Ferenzi. Ferenzi, against his fellow centaur's wishes, warns him, warns Harry about the forest um, and that it's especially not safe for him right now. He also explains that unicorn's blood can be used to keep people alive with a terrible price, a half-cursed life. They wonder who, who could want to stay alive that much um, and also want the Sorcerer's Stone, and Harry realizes that Voldemort could be the only possibility. Harry meets up with Hermione and Hagrid, and they head back to Hogwarts. They recount everything they've discovered to Ron and head up to bed. Harry finds the invisibility cloak in his bed with a note saying, just in case. And that is it. That is my blubbering mess of a chapter summary. It was was (laughs) was very nice, Casey. Oh, you guys are too nice. (laughs) I love the centaurs. Yeah, me too. I mean, I hate them because they're assholes, but, like, <laughs> I, 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 like, I love them in the same way I love Dumbledore, which is just, like, every other line that comes out of their mouths, I'm like, I could tattoo that somewhere. <laughs> like, like Mars is reading, red tonight? Mars is bright tonight. <laughs> Maybe I Get have it right, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> and then I love that Hagrid's like, oh, yeah, I've heard. <laughs> Yeah, Hag- Hag- Hagrid doesn't know shit about astronomy. He's just like, oh, yeah, 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 totally. Well, he was thinking of something a little closer to home. <laughs> I was trying to think of why they would say like something about Mars. Does that ever come up eventually? Or is it just... I think there's a specific... I don't know if they ever get into it, but I, I'm guessing there's a specific um, like symbolism attached to Mars as being something dark like and foreboding violence. or yeah, violent. Or well, Mars is the god of war, but... I guess it could be impending war. Yeah. Also, the patron of the unicorns. Yeah, I think um, they explain it in one of the later books. It was like the last time Mars was that red, like, was when Voldemort was rising in power or something like that. Right, that's right. I wonder how... Like, this is, in the long run, the beginning of the second Voldemort war, so... I wonder right. how well centaurs would match with like muggle astronomers. Red is especially like red. Uh, Mars is. Fuck. <laughs> red is, <especially laughs> red, is like, guys. red is very red. <laughs> Get out of here, you muggle. 
<laughs> I'll take my science and go. Thank you very much. <laughs> I mean, with muggle astrologers, Let me just... probably very poorly, but with muggle uh, astrologers. Yeah, astrologers. Crazy to do well anyway. Yeah. Astrologers. Astrologers. I mean, they don't really like they don't really like Trelawney, so maybe not. But. <laughs> So yeah, I think if you put uniform? centaurs and scientists next to each other, like the scientists would be like, "You shouldn't exist." I did. I did Have see you, someone that's today. That's what happened, Matt. <laughs> someone recently I saw was like, "How do baby centaurs work?" Because, like, the the human part should be way more developed than the horse part, and like that just wouldn't make sense. And it's like, <laughs> all I can think of is that that would be really cute. So. I'm probably not the right person to answer this question. Yeah, that would be... All I can think about is how I'd never stop saying I'm hung like a horse. <laughs> and then you would get and thrown out what... of the clan. Do they <laughs> wear loincloths? Or then, do they not? Then Matt would just, like, wander into bars and just tell people how red Mars is and just... Yeah. <laughs> if these centaurs Walk into the bar and be like, if you say, why the long face, I swear to God I'm gonna punch you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not related to Mr. Ed. <laughs> uh, any other thoughts on the Forbidden Forest? And like literally the dumbest punishment ever. Like how is how is that okay? It's how hey, I remember when I was sent out on detention with a big hairy groundskeeper <laughs> who raised dangerous animals in his cottage. And then the, he, like, didn't even care about my safety and just sent me and, like, the worst kid ever to go search for a dead animal. And just without any, like, talking about how we would, like, meet back up or what I would do if I was in trouble. No, no. Just go off into the forest. Red sparks. Yeah, they, they don't know how to do shit this year. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> lifting year. feathers. And Hermione's already gone with Hagrid. If anything, he should have sent Hermione out of, like, the other three that she knows, like, her shit. I mean, they're undoubtedly screwed, but... And it's not even the normal level of danger. It's not the normal level of danger in the forest. It's There's something worse in there. They know that. (laughs) They're like, oh, send the kids in there. This is... What could go wrong? Now, now... Now that you lost your arm and leg to that horrible man-eating creature, I hope you'll never sneak out again, considering right. the fact you won't be able to. And is it really that? Is it that rare that kids would be out at night, like out yeah. past curfew? Is it that crazy yeah. that that would oh, happen? Oh, you know, I was some like that too. seventh years are banging in like a broom closet or something. <laughs> <laughs> the room of but requirement. It was- uh, certainly an overreaction to give uh, f- 50 points each off their house and send them into the forest. That's a yeah, very harsh punishment. But I guess I mean, McGonagall says, like, this, I've never seen this happen before, like, this kind of behavior. But, like, I know. why? Because everyone else is good at sneaking it, around. I think it seems like Fred and George would be out all the time. Guaranteed Maybe they the are. Maybe kids just don't get caught. Maybe. And they don't have invisibility cloaks. Yeah, they're just really sneaky. She was like, you really had an invisibility water. cloak and you got caught. That's why she's upset. <laughs> I expected you know, better of you. <laughs> I used to play these Harry Potter video games they'd have and it was always, the best part was always sneaking around at night and having, like, there was always, like, people patro- patrolling back and forth, like, non-stop everywhere. Oh, the prefects? Like, yeah, they're like, why are Those they assholes. up all night? Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember I, which one this was. I always remember the GameCube uh, Harry Potter Chamber of Secrets game where you could just fly around on your broomstick like without end. And I'm just like, fuck the rest of the game. I'm just going to hang out around here. Some of them were actually pretty good, but most of them were not so good. I had fun. Yeah. Well, that's what matters. Anyway. Um, yeah. How uh, plentiful do you think unicorns are? Or are they super rare and hard to find? Like you said before, they use their parts for like wands and stuff but if they also can keep you alive it seems like they would be hunted to extinction I hear there are some on Skagos that's uh, true that's, that's strictly a rumor <laughs> um, I, yeah I don't know it's it's kind of my same question with dragon that they have like dragon heartstring and like dragon liver but like how do you actually get your hands on a dragon well they also have well, unicorn the in their, um, in their uh, wands right 
Yeah. Unicorn yeah. hair, yeah. They get all the hair, dragon parts when the world makes sense. Like get hair, picked up. Uni unicorn hair makes sense. The pattern. So they shed it, right? I mean, maybe they shed the horns too. Maybe. Mm. I, I mean, had to say, like, uh, their hair gets snagged on, like, branches and he uses it to, like, bind up bow truckles or some shit. Right. I mean, I don't think it would be that hard. I don't think an ex it would be that hard for an experienced wizard to catch them if they were around, if they were prevalent. Like, it, you could just immobilize them or something like that. I guess the bad thing is killing them. Well, Rowling does, I mean, like, hint at the virgin thing in, uh... Yeah. They only come to, like, young virgin girls. Yeah. Right. And then what? It's like, thankfully, there's nothing terribly awkward, and like they are really repelled <laughs> by one or two of the girls. That's an that's an Arthurian thing, right? Mm -hmm. That that kind of. Ron, why know. does that unicorn keep following you? <laughs> no, they don't like boys. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, shouldn't there be a ton of unicorns around Hogwarts then? <laughs> <laughs> No, well, not I don't know. I mean, I don't really want to address that. The spinsterhood <laughs> of teachers is certainly questionable, but... That's yeah. true. None of them seem to have any lives at all. I mean, if they get, like, the unicorn hair from, like, the unicorn is getting it snagged on stuff, I can just picture, like, a unicorn just going, Fuck! I got, it, got stuck on a branch again! Son of a bitch! <laughs> That's worth a ton of money! He just rips it <laughs> off. Oh, hair. god damn it! <laughs> Then he trips and it breaks his horn off, and he's like, "Ah, oh, how could this day get any worse?" <laughs> then the guy with the hood starts sucking on his neck. Yeah, <laughs> kinky. It's like it's like the version of Harry saying, "How could it get worse than this?" Right. Well, I go, Oops. "Son, you haven't." Oh. I'm also curious about the logistics of the drinking uh, blood to stay alive. How long does it keep you alive, and what does the cursed and like half life mean? It seems like more people would stoop to that unless they had like. They knew there was an afterlife that they were kind of missing out on or something. If you know you're dying, you can finish up some stuff by having some unicorn blood. The half-life is that now whenever he watches Game of Thrones, all he can see are the imperfections in it. <laughs> I mean, I, I, do we all have half-lives then? Oh, we're, we are all, like, <laughs> evil people, so, yes. We would all kill unicorns. If I get an extra life, yeah. Not damn, I will. I, I was interpreted that as like being very painful and like, um, yeah, some weird bad stuff that you feel all the time. Yeah, you just yeah, feel weird some bad stuff all the time. out there. You just feel super weird. Like you just have that super weird feeling. Like, but exactly. if you just, you if it's super feel like you have diarrhea basically <laughs> <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Poor Quirrell. <laughs> the worst. The worst. Why is Professor Quirrell always in the bathroom? <laughs> Unicorn blood does not go down well. <laughs> Aww. It's really Permanent dysentery. Oh, boy. Anyway. Um, let's, let's, let's get into this almost ending. Who's next? I was clicked away from the thing. Zach, take it away yeah. through the chapter. door. door. Alright, so with Summer fast approaching, Harry, Ron, and Hermione... Wait, I'm just checking if I'm talking. I'm talking. Harry, Ron, and Hermione take their first year at Hogwarts exams. Harry gets through all the tests unscathed, despite persistent nightmares of the creature in the forest that he now suspects to be Voldemort. As he discusses his worries with his friends, Harry realizes that something seems odd about Hagrid randomly being given a dragon egg by a stranger. They confront Hagrid about it, and he admits to telling the stranger some very important information about Fluffy because Hagrid can't keep a secret to save his life. The group rushes off to, it, to inform Dum Dumbledore, but learn from Professor McGonagall that he, the headmaster is off on a trip to London. Harry decides to take matters into his own hands, and joined by his friends, he sets out to recover the Sorcerer's Stone before Snape can. In a show of courage, Neville tries to stop them from causing more trouble, but Hermione immobilizes, immobilizes him with a spell, and they head off to the Forbidden Third Floor Corridor. With the help of some flute playing, they sneak past the slumbering Fluffy and enter a trap door to confront the challenges prepared by the Hogwarts teachers. They escape a deadly plant, retrieve a winged key, win a game of chess by sacrificing Ron, walk past an incapacitated troll, and solve an, an incredibly simple potion puzzle. Harry advances alone to the last room and finds someone waiting for him. Which we find out in the next chapter. Who could it be? That's this chapter. Now. 
I always oh, no. feel like these. I always oh, no, feel we, like these. Sorry, we guys. lost Ron. What are we gonna do? Keep going. Well, Go move on, on to the next room, yeah. I guess. <laughs> no big deal. Aww. It's not like he's he has a concussion or brain damage. He's fine. He'll be okay. And he sacrificed himself so they could go on. But foolishly, why didn't he just pick? Why didn't he just pick to be king, and then he wouldn't have to sacrifice himself? If you're allowed to just tell all the pieces to go anywhere, be king, and then you're there till the end. Ron's not very smart, he wanted but he to knows be the a game. Knight. Yeah, he probably also <laughs> well, wanted the mobility. And but I mean, you don't have you to just move. command them to move. You don't have to do it yourself. I don't know. It was very grand, okay? It just had to get him out of the way because they didn't have anything else to do with him. Yeah, I always feel like this chapter and the chapter after it, in my head, are much longer and more fraught with tension. Like they, it seems like everything is. It takes a while to get through, but it goes so fast. In actuality, when you read through it, it's like that last bit. I mean, we'll get into the last part, but it's like like three seconds and then it's over. And all this, all these challenges, go by super fast. It's just like they they figure it out really quick. So yeah, the whole book was really like that. For me, like thinking back as a kid, it seemed so epic and extended and everything was so intricate. But then reading back through it now, everything just kind of rushes along at quite a brisk pace and things happen every chapter and it's done. Yeah. Felt yeah. different. So all these obstacles were supposed to keep out Voldemort and yeah, three we're, kids we're got through them. Feast for crows. <laughs> and these obstacles suck, but I guess the point is especially with the the puzzle at the end, Hermione makes the point like wizards are idiots; they couldn't possibly figure this out. Also, they do need <laughs> to get back through it; like it needs to be passable. Right, they have an advantage in that they have multiple people, and I think some of these are supposed to be like a thing where maybe someone has to sacrifice themselves, or there's some some cost to uh, to having only one. Yeah, but I just love the idea of Snape sitting down and writing this rhyming poem. <laughs> <laughs> I know that surprised me too. Did Snape actually write it? Sorry, I it think Snape did. Line? And those uh, vials must refill themselves because otherwise the first person through, they would just be gone and then you wouldn't have anything to drink. Oh yeah, I assume that. I think that's why, but that minor why nitpicks. the potion that Harry drinks, there's very little of it left. Because Quirrell has already drank like a large gulp. From that bottle. Ew, Something. there's quirrell spit on there. Yeah. Well, does that mean that Harry is going to get poisoned by unicorn blood if he touches that? Harry, why are you in the bathroom? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Damn Half-Life. Did we lose someone? <laughs> yeah, Pod's out. We lost Pod? He'll be back, maybe. He'll be back. Then he'll come back. Anyway, um, yes, I love I love the moment with Ron. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. Me too. So before that, I find Ron's behavior very bizarre at the devil snare part, where he starts yelling at, at Hermione, <laughs> about, are, "Are you a wizard or not?" It just feels like it's so out of out of character for him. I know that he's like mean to Hermione, but it just felt like a very adult kind of statement. Especially the part later, where he's like, "At least Harry didn't lose his head." At least he was thinking. I don't know, it just didn't seem very... To me, that was just like, he's grown up like this. So, like, the idea of Hermione being like, how do we get fire, is like, is like you holding a cell phone and being like, how do I call someone, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, he's just so used to magic. Ron has the street smarts, and uh, Hermione has the book smarts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, does he? an idiot. <laughs> Yeah, totally. They played wizard chess on the streets all the time. <laughs> Unfortunately, the wizard chess kind of goes away. Like, it's not... Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, how long can you make chess interesting, though, right? I don't <laughs> Harry, know. Right. Harry moved his bishop, <laughs> bishop to R9. Ron <laughs> responded by moving his knight to E6. Well, Dick Yerling doesn't then... know how chess works, because her directions are actually wrong. Um, but, like... Like, Ron tells Harry to move in a direction that he shouldn't be able to move. It's, it's wizard's chess. It doesn't... It's magic. It's like quantum chess. But it still follows the same rules of chess. <laughs> <laughs> or does it? Yes, it does. <laughs> or does it? Oh my god. 
Why are you I... here? <laughs> it's magic. Paul brings I up just... a good point. Does it? Or does it? <laughs> so I don't know if it was mentioned, but I was uh, surprised this time to when they first fell down the, on the plant thing. He, he says, we must be miles under the school. Yeah. I didn't realize it was so far down. <laughs> they should be. I mean, even if it's a soft surface, they should probably not be doing okay if they fell down miles. <laughs> also, are the dungeons miles below? <laughs> Hermione yeah, broke the third several floor. Floor. It's not like it's the first floor corridor. It's the third floor corridor. Yeah, but the it's castle can't be miles you're high near up. the core of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just like eleven year olds exaggerating. Yeah, I yeah. agree. It must be that because it makes no sense. Otherwise. We must be miles. There's like thirty feet up. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. But or I was it's always magic. very proud of Hermione when she was like, "Yeah, this plant's trying to eat you guys." Like, hi, wake up. But Hermione really is smart. You know when she sees the. Um, the riddle from Snape, she goes like, that is smart, you know, because wizards, they don't really, you know, do logic. Yeah, which, which <laughs> is kind well. of a theme, actually, that wizards are definitely very reliant on magic to get yeah. their stuff done. They Except remember any of everything them. with a limerick. Except any of them that were muggle-born, like Hermione, which right. seems like there would be a fair number. I think they're severely a minority, though. I think so too. I can't think of a ton. There's Dean yeah. Thomas. Yeah, there's also. more. I think there's more half bloods. Yeah, I think there's more. Like that's like the common. But you'd also think half bloods would also be like aware of like the uh, wizarding, uh, the Muggle world, if they have like a parent who is a Muggle. I think there are people who literally just like live, like. Like, really? Like a muggle. Well. <laughs> like alive, alive. <laughs> I hate you all. Um, uh, th th there are there are muggles who marry witchers and wizards. And witchers. Magical people, and then just live in that world. Oh, I could never. Honey, where's the outlet? What's an outlet? Fuck. <laughs> Just yeah, ask Arthur Weasley. Can do magic yeah, I think there's some good trade-offs on that one. They can do a yeah, lot of things. Yeah, but I'd rather just be like, oh, visiting the in-laws is really fun because I get to see all this whimsical magic and stuff, but then I get to go back home. Am I a Dursley? I think I'm a Dursley. <laughs> <laughs> I like going back to my manicured lawn and sitting in my house all alone. And selling drills. Yeah, but, I mean, you got to figure... You gotta figure that what they all get like real educations till they're about ten years old. Like you would, you would hope that's, so. That's that's not because I mean they're not learning anything in like useful in the Muggle world. Ah, oh. I, I would most definitely. Of them, it's surprised when they get the Hogwarts letter, right? No. For Muggle. Oh yeah, Muggleborns. It's like what? <laughs> Yeah. Well, Dumbledore has to go would, over, right? I think half bloods would just be like the same as you know, fully magical people. They wouldn't really go to school, I guess, unless their parent was not my kids undercover. Yeah, that they would. Yes, and wait to see if the child is magical or not. Yeah. <laughs> Throw him out a window. Yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Tried and tested. Actually, can we just talk for a second about Neville and how no, I don't Neville know. is? Yeah. I feel so He's bad for best. Neville. Oh. He he tries to he like finally gets some courage after after getting that chocolate frog, and then he thinks his friends betrayed him, and here he's trying to do the right thing, and they just immobilize him and leave him on the ground face down. And also it's fighting horrifying. Crab and Goyle by himself. Like that was bold. What yeah, the hell, yeah, you know, and he comes off of this, and it's like, great, you were so brave, and then they're like, oh no, but not against us. Like, don't be brave, don't be brave to us. <laughs> Why couldn't he come? Yeah, could have they just included him and been a foursome throughout all the books? No, because then there wow. would have been an extra person to get rid of. Yeah, dead weight. Just get rid of Ron instead. Keep Neville. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, uh, actually, while I was reading, like, these couple of chapters, I was like, oh, maybe, did she, like, think that maybe she'd add in Ned Neville eventually, or, like, maybe not? Well, maybe. she did add in Neville eventually. Super eventually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, last book eventually. <laughs> like, yeah, last, he's yeah. there in Order of the Phoenix, too. He's always around. Right. No, no, like, they went to the, uh, uh, that would be, like, a major spoiler, but, you know, they went to find Sirius. All six of them went. Like, Luna and Ginny and Neville went to. Right. Yeah, but that's because they start up the club. And they're like, oh. Well, yeah, but that's, like, half the series. So, like, three books, at least, Neville is a major character. I think... What is it? Part of what I love about Neville, though, is that he kind of is... It's like the Harry Shadow that type thing, you know, like from Ender's Game. That he's sort of this, like, part but not a part of the adventure. And then he turns out yeah. to be so, like, intimately connected with it. Mm-hmm. And he's, like, the, the the other side of Harry almost. Yeah. yeah. But I think from, like, the first, like, from the start to the end of the whole series, Neville is, like, the character who has the most character growth because... Harry, Ron, and Hermione are basically the same person they are at the start of the series to when it ends, right? Just some and angst in there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're more yeah, mature, but, but they're still definitely... Yeah, more or less the same person, right? But never, like, really goes. Yeah. Hmm. I'd agree with that. Because Shall we move? kind of starts with more of a character flaw you know, than the rest of them. Or, like, not a flaw, but character challenge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That his life is shit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Alright, so let's do this last chapter! Of the book! Of the book! <laughs> well, huh? How did we Devil manage this? <laughs> Assuming Matthew's still awake. Oh, crap. Uh, Matthew, are you here? I haven't heard him in a while. It is Was he the last chapter? Oh no! Yeah. You might not be. Still on the call. Wait, he's still on the call. Yeah. I've fallen asleep with the call. Should we try screaming really loud? <laughs> no, please. <laughs> no, I think we don't want. Yeah, I think that's happened before. He just went to sleep. Went to sleep. Aww. Well, we do try we to get keep a him awake throughout somewhere? the night. <laughs> yeah. I- I'm messaging him. Necessary, we can resort to spark notes or whatever. <laughs> Maybe Greg will hop on. We could wait for Greg, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> wait 10 minutes. Just talk Does about I how. Message Greg and say we need an alternate. Like... Oh, I hear crickets. Yeah. <laughs> wow. This is just as awkward as it seems. <laughs> So, are we just gonna spark notes this or what? Yeah, let's just let's just do it. Sadly, I mean, I, it's Matthew literally the last chapter. Yeah. <laughs> so in the what final chapter, fuck you, Paul. The final <laughs> chapter is called "The Man with Two Faces," and I have a theory about this chapter title that I will share with you after. Does the man have two faces? The, Can't the, wait. the man does have two faces. Yes. Good theory. Um. Should I should I try and do this? I'll try and do this. Please go um, in an English accent. All right. <laughs> so basically, um, Harry gets into the final chamber and it's Quirrell, and Quirrell is really happy to tell him everything that he has been doing the entire year, and like goes into like detail about all the times that he was foiled in Harry's um, in in his <laughs> attempts to kill Harry. Uh, and then, um, and then, basically, the last thing is Dumbledore's little trick, and it's the Mirror of Erised, and Harry manages to get the stone from the Mirror of Erised because he uh, he really decides that he just wants the stone. So uh, the stone goes into his pocket, and Quirrell's still freaking out because he doesn't know how to get it. And then um, he's like, "Master, I need your help!" And um, oh my gosh, the back of Quirrell's head starts to talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, you have no idea. Wow. And um 
Wow. Turns out that Voldemort is living, don't interrupt me, is living in the back of, of Quirrell's head. Um, and this is actually a fairly recent development. Um, and yeah, so um, Voldemort is basically like, he has the stone, we have to kill him. And Quirrell tries to do that, but Harry touches him and Quirrell's skin starts to blister and burn, which I'd totally forgotten about, actually. Um, and then... Harry basically fights him off, fights him off, fights him off, and then he blacks out, um, and he wakes up in the hospital wing three days later, and the stone is destroyed, and D Dumbledore's there, and they have their second, well, really their first, like, end-of-year powwow, which will become a tradition uh, in the Harry Potter series. Um, and then, and, you know, Dumbledore tells him um, a lot of things. He doesn't tell him why Voldemort tried to kill him in the first place, which I remember as, like, an 11 or 12-year-old, reading that and being like oh, okay we're in for the long haul aren't we like i really remember thinking that and then um you guys are so quiet i should do this all the time <laughs> it's very entertaining Thank you. So yeah good. we have a certain respect for it. being i suppose i know it's <laughs> yes. over isn't it uh, and then um what else does dumbledore tell him he basically is just like um oh and he tells him about harry's uh harry's being protected by um, his mother's love and that she died to save him and that is so good that um, Quirrell couldn't couldn't physically touch him which is sort of silly and also sort of really touching um, and then um, Hagrid comes and gives him a uh, his birthday present um, which is or something whatever pictures of his parents it's really sweet Ron and Hermione come and um, they're a great audience and then it turns out that um, Gryffindor has just been completely flattened in the House Cup and they're in last place and Slytherin won for the seventh year in a row and you know whatever it's fine so Harry finally gets down to the feast and Voldemort uh, I'm sorry Dumbledore proves to be like <laughs> king Whoa. of like deus ex house points and awards them all exactly as much as they need to um, beat uh, uh, Slytherin for the House Cup and including Neville gets 10 points for standing up to his friends, which is really sweet. And I don't know how Dumbledore knew about that. Um, but, um, yeah, and then they all go home for the year. And um, Harry's, you know, really kind of happy to be... He's sad to be leaving Hogwarts, but he's happy that, like, he can, you know, go home with this... You know, look forward to a summer of torturing Dudley by pretending to do magic. And, um, yes, that was my recap as being a w 007. So. Fantastic. Nice. Well done. That was, was marvelous. That was I was expecting surprising. it to be really bad, but it was actually really, really good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nice low bar there, Paul. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Clearly you haven't listened to any of the Full Castle recordings, because I whipped this out for those. I, was, I had a couple of them, but I just didn't remember. Yeah. If I was narrating, I was doing that accent. Um, so, yeah. So, this is the... This is the end. My my theory, by the way, is that the man with two faces um, can also refer to Dumbledore. Mm. 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 Why? Because he has two faces. Because he, yeah, he, he really <laughs> does. Never see the back of his head, do you? It's covered by all that hair. <laughs> but it's also just like he is he he is this fundamentally mysterious. Um person who is, you know, he's not lying to Harry, but he is no. he doesn't lie to him oh, shut up, Casey yes, Yankees beat the Mets oh, shut up, Suck Matt the call. hell yeah oh, I'm sorry, Yay, what, what place I'm are you guys fan. in? what? No. what place in the standings are you guys in? <laughs> I don't know no. my package doesn't have ESPN you don't have the newspaper? Oh. What the fuck's a newspaper? <laughs> yeah, so. Well, man, a newspaper is a device to, to do the information. Device. device, yes. Um, well, Dumbledore doesn't lie to Harry here, um, and he just withholds the truth from him, uh, and he says he's going to do that. Um, I forget why I was saying that, but I was. Man of two phases. Yes, so... Yeah, and I mean, like, the stuff we learn about Dumbledore, like, book seven is, like, almost a little traumatic for me, and all the stuff we learn about Dumbledore, and how different he is from who we thought he was. Not just mm. Oh, nobody cares about the Cubs, push up. <laughs> I care! 
Somebody else say something. <laughs> I, my How's favorite part of this. Shit? <laughs> my favorite part of this chapter. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff, obviously, but my favorite part is Ron just geeking out about how crazy Dumbledore is. Yeah. He's like, oh, he's so he's crazy. I love it. <laughs> he's like, oh, he thinks that he thinks dying is awesome. It's hilarious. <laughs> Which actually, if you think about it, like the way, the way the series ends, that's a really, Poignant. it's a really interesting thing, thing that it's that like one of their first major conversations starts off like this. You know, now a bunch of other people from houses are going to be doing dangerous shit just so they can win the house cup. <laughs> it's just yeah, you know, gonna have a lot of dead kids, or at least more than usual. Just and they do. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah, Hogwarts does not lack for dead children in the years upcoming. I don't know why. There's the detention in the Death Forest. There's keeping a very important relic hidden away in a place surrounded by children, using them as shields. Uh, there's the giant snake in the basement. There's the giant there's snake that, in the basement. There's that there's, trick step they can fall through and die. There's, that there's the ease of which a troll can get in the castle. No, that's only if your defense against the dark arts teacher is evil, and carrying Voldemort. Oh so yeah, like half the time. So half the time. Half the the time. Def <laughs> the defense against the dark arts teacher is never evil, except like a good portion Always. of the time. <laughs> well, the next one's not evil. Yeah, but he's incompetent he's just as fuck. Just almost as bad. Yeah. Might and, uh, well competent be to the point I, of being I evil. Think I think the teacher who's actually actively evil is better a teacher than him. That's that's true. <laughs> you mean <laughs> Barty Crouch? Barty Crouch, Crouch Jr. Pretty Marty good job. Crouch Jr. Do you mean him or do you mean Doctor. do you mean um, Barty Crouch Jr. Oh, I actually. All right. Yeah, they yeah but I mean to the block card, obviously. Whatever. So still, still in year one. Future books. Lots to cover still. Yeah. Lockhart's still like pretty evil. He's he's ready to do some shit there at but the end he, of the book. He steals he's other people's anime. He's not evil. Yeah. He's just gross. Just a yeah. cock. <clears throat> yes. Just a big cock. Big old. Cock. Excuse me. What? <laughs> how big? How big? <laughs> you <Huge. laughs> size. Oh my god. Um. Yeah, Ours is red. I, I About, was actually surprised, like reading reading the stuff at the end. I was like, okay, this is bullshit. Like <laughs> with Gryffindor. Like yeah. as a kid, it was like really um, validating. Yeah, like, they, they, that their that their achievements and their trials were kind of recognized. And now I'm kind of like Slytherin won fair and square, man. <laughs> what did we learn? That following the rules will only get you so far as that when you break them, that you get rewarded. Oh, yeah, at the same thing. time, though, McGonagall keeps taking points away from her house, and Snape just keeps taking points away from Gryffindor, so the whole system is bullshit, anyway. That's anyways, true, so. that's true. It's not exactly... It's very American. Excuse me? I'm just disillusioned with my country, you, never mind. You have a problem with America? <laughs> About uh, when Harry gets the stone out of the mirror, uh, he's told that you can't want to get it out to use it, you can just want have to want to get it out for the sake of getting it out. But isn't Quirrell wanting to just get it out to give it to someone? He doesn't want to use it. He just wants to have it. So it seems like no, uh, that was kind of a weird loophole. Well, he, no, he, he, he wants to use it for a of life, right? Yeah, he would have to make it for Voldemort. So. And then uh, what? Give birth to him out of the back of his skull? I mean, that's not not terribly like much creepier than what actually ends up happening. Well, he, they do say he wants to make himself a body, so I'm not sure how that process works in this game. Maybe it's similar to whatever. Like, you crush <laughs> it up, and then you snort it. <laughs> yeah, elixir. Still have that half-life, though. Elixir is <laughs> That's why Dumbledore destroyed it. He just, yeah, he just grinded it down. He started the, the stone. Nicholas, Nicholas was on his way out, so they decided to have a good time with that uh, crystal dust. <laughs> One more time, old friend. Of course. <gasps> oh! Don't forget about Paranel Flamel, the wife. Yeah, she was around oh, too. She, she I was, too. I was kind of hoping. Has addiction, so that's I, I was kind of hoping when they say their ages that she would be like like two hundred years younger than him because he got tired of his <laughs> past wife or something. Got a new one. 
midway through. Traded in for the newer model. <laughs> oh God. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's slash Philosopher's Stone. Unless anybody has anything else to contribute. Nothing useful. Nothing. Well, you could say other <laughs> useful things too. I have been. Trust me. I I know. I'm just giving you permission. Hufflepuff was robbed. <laughs> it's actually a thing in like in the, uh, that play I mentioned, um, Puffs, which is actually coming to off Broadway. So if you're in New York, seriously go see it because it's hysterical. Um, but uh, this this play is told from the perspective of Hufflepuffs, and their like big um, like goal for the first year is to get third place. So they're like, third or nothing, third or nothing. And they get third place, and then Gryffindor gets all the points. <laughs> so, Aww! <laughs> God That's damn so it, sad. Gryffindor. Yeah. Son of a biscuit! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so darn tootin' mad right now. Good gravy, I'm... Ugh. It's fine, they just went and got high after. It's not a <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah, they just went back to the herbology classes and. <laughs> yeah. Rob's got some good shit, man. It's herbology. <laughs> cool. So, uh, anyone else? Anything else to contribute? Any any last observations? Any? Aw, Harry, you're screwed. To the next book. Yeah. I can't yeah. get to the bottom. The best book. When you'll look back at like these books and everything, it's like, oh, this is actually just kind of tame, you know? Oh, I mean, they get into some scary, irresponsible situations, but at this point in the books, you just kind of like, oh, I guess this is just how things work. And then later on in the series, people die. Yeah. Yeah. And then the yeah, Battle of Hogwarts is just like a bloodbath. <laughs> and then in the Battle of Hogwarts, 11-year-olds get, like, killed. Yeah, yeah, it gets pretty brutal. Or is in this next book they come up with all kinds of contrived reasons why people don't die constantly. Uh, right. Oh, real because there for a yeah. minute. camera. Yeah, it seems like oh, this creature that can kill with its eyes. Well, it seems like at this point it's just purposely looking in people's reflections. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just wants to look at its own reflection. Now it's just being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Narcissistic snake. Thousand snake. years old. How? What, what do I look like? Smile for the camera. <laughs> Just wanted a picture taken of it. <laughs> Too bad. Maybe he's misunderstood. Take, yeah, he's been trying to get a picture taken of him, but he keeps destroying the cameras whenever he looks into them. <laughs> it's so sad. I'll never take a selfie. <laughs> Selfies Aww. weren't a thing when this was written. There was a thing yeah. before selfies. Yeah. Crazy. So I'm thinking book two uh, has 18 chapters. So. You want to do two podcasts nine, again? Nine and nine. I was thinking, yeah. That makes sense yeah. to me. Seems to have been working pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Did Adam just join? Hey, Adam. Hello. <laughs> oh, hi. Hello. <laughs> I'm not here. Did you just, did you just know it was ending? I'm we still have some here. after show to do, because Mikhail's going to okay. give us the skinny on the cursed child or something. No, I'm not. I'm not no I don't want to know. Yeah, I'll read it eventually. Just tell me everything so I don't have to bother. It, it, it sounds not good. Um, if it sounds not good, then don't you already know? I know most of it, yeah. I will All right, I'm going to jump sh- off because I don't want to be spoiled. Okay, so. I'm, not, I'm not talking about it. We're not All talking right. about it. So, yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, um... Yeah, so so thank you everyone for joining us at uh, Hogwarts again. We'll, we will be back soonish with uh, someday. <laughs> someday, <laughs> hopefully not in too long. Um, with I might actually put up the the uh, Axio sooner so that I can. It's like, Axio. No, it's Axio. Uh, it's Axio. It's Levio. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's friends. <laughs> <laughs> Secrets next, probably eight chapters and eight chapters. And thank you guys so much for recording with me. Thank you for listening. And um, this has really been lovely. And have a good night. Bye. Tina.
Yay. Aloha, Mora. Bye. Bye. <laughs> no, adios. It's -a me, Ferenze. <laughs> I got shit to say about that chamber. It's, it's nine and nine chapters, not eight and eight. <laughs> Ma math is hard. <laughs> We're gonna leave two she out. She can fix it. Didn't she say nine and nine before? I, no, she said earlier, eight. but I then in the last one, she said eight. eight. At math. Okay. Oh. You a wizard? If I have to, if I have to pay for anything when we're together in, in the mountains, this. But not in the same room. <laughs> Uh, right, I don't even know if that's going to happen because both Casey and I were like, okay, but who's going to call? Who's yeah. Gonna call? I'm not going to call. Yeah, I was like, well, well, you can flip a coin, but I'm like, but then the call's going to lie. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't have to call because I just hitched my wagon to Greg's room. See, I, yeah. see what I did there? I just didn't have to do it. Having to call meaning you have to call the facility yeah. and reserve something? Hmm. Yes. Oh, so just that does sound scary. <laughs> I think Casey should call if she's going to be molesting Michal in their bedroom Stop later. Stop it! What? That's not appropriate. Wait, I missed that. <laughs> Something about I'm, I'm, that's being on fingers. Like... Oh. oh. Okay, that's, that's why you guys are talking about nails. Show. Definitely not. Alright, good night, guys. I gotta go. Good night, Matt. Good night, Bye. Marley. Bye, Marley. Bye. Wait, so we were waiting for Greg, but we got Adam? I know. I guess it'll do. Not that. Not that I'm disappointed. <laughs> ah, no, you're you. disappointed. Love. No, he's a lovely addition. <laughs> it's -a me, Ferenze. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Hello. But who's typing? No typing. Shush with the typing. Sorry. I, wow. Sorry. I just turned into a meme. <laughs> it's -a me, Ferenze. <laughs> There's also this lovely thing called Wikipedia, if you ever... <laughs> As a lot of us learned, looking up trivia questions for Greg. <laughs> no, this all came from the heart. Oh yeah, I definitely knew who the Gergs were right off the top of my head. <laughs> oh, but I forget we're talking to the Harry Potter trivia champion. Um, who, who is that for, for our listeners? Um, we'll Harry chat. Potter trivia champion of, of 2003. That's so, when I last did Harry Potter trivia. So, so we'll God. probably challenge this at some point, but but for now, I guess we'll... Were you 10? Yeah. <laughs> Actually less than that, probably. Anyway. Oh my God. Even less than that. <laughs> uh, I was like 7, so if that makes you feel any better. It's -a me, Ferenze. <laughs> to be fair, like the the internet wasn't like as much of a well, really at all a thing. So, or I mean, like as whatever, it wasn't. It we weren't like super connected to authors and stuff. So, like we're aware that like George is out there and writing, but like, I remember are we? Those th well, are we really aware? Well, we're aware. I don't think we there. are. <laughs> well, I'm yeah, scared. he does keep writing on his blog. He has to like say it every week like oh yeah i am still writing yeah i have to write you know twelve thousand words on on the current state of modern fantasy for my blog so maybe he does something else too but like maybe when... <laughs> it's -a me Ferenze. wait what's a wait hold on what's a magazine <laughs> <laughs> just kidding it's it's the thing that like you it's a printed website basically oh that may, yeah, that's weird but okay yeah um so the fuck is print <laughs> <laughs> oh bro uh, i don't know gonna... Some, uh, maybe maybe matt you should explain that to uh to casey and and the youngins <laughs> I didn't oh, even Casey, say anything. Yeah, Casey, you that was Zach why and Paul. We, you drew attention to yourself here. <laughs> Casey, we need a youngins cast. This is why we need it. Just <laughs> as therapy. <laughs> All right, maybe we'll magazines see. is how we used to look at the pornography. <laughs> Ooh, right. That's how barbaric. So uncivilized. Mm. Says we would have to buy them. It wasn't just. 
this collection of free porn that we now have. Or just get it from your parents. Yeah, Matt found out that Order of the Phoenix is coming out in a porno magazine. Uh, <laughs> I've been mean, porn for it. The... Why do I feel like Pod is helping write that? <laughs> a vibrant fanfic community back in the day. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with fanfic. We just got some official... Well, according to George, there's something wrong with fanfic, apparently. Yeah, fuck George on that. Well, maybe if he actually wrote his books and finished them, we wouldn't have to resort to that. Oh, oh. Burn! Burn! <laughs> Kiss by fire. No, no. Burn by fire. <laughs> it's me, Ferenze! <laughs> Harry gets his broomstick, right? Mm-hmm. Harry... <laughs> <laughs> You're all like, let's see how long she can fuck this up for. <laughs> it's me, Ferenze. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's like a certain parallel to like people think that gorillas should have like rights because they they have more advanced like cognitive functions or whatever. But like the wizarding world doesn't seem that advanced. Harambe. Yeah, De- definitely. <laughs> I, w- I was waiting for someone to say something. R.I.P. It's me, Ferenze! YouTube is our sponsor. Uh, oh, no. This podcast brought to you by YouTube. We all Nobody's love it. Nobody's happy about this. It's me, Ferenze! Um, <laughs> Zach, stop distracting. Sorry. <laughs> if, if we ever pause, by the way, it's because Zach has sent us something asinine over Skype, and like, <laughs> at least I'm not saying it. This. Or Paul. Yeah, or Paul. But Paul, you're you're a bad influence on Paul, Zach. <laughs> I would. I need a better better father figure. They tell me that all the time. <laughs> oh, the... whatever. Uh, <laughs> where was I? Murdered forest, led by an incompetent giant. Hi, yeah, basically. <laughs> it's me, Ferenze. <laughs> that's that's right, right? <laughs> Actually, Maybe. I think it's it's fire inzi. What? Oh, Ferenze. It's fire inzi. I well, I tried to look it up beforehand because like I totally I forget, but I think it's Ferenze. Um. Okay. You do wow. <laughs> what, what do you think it is? I'm sorry. I thought that's what you guys said. No, I was joking that you have to say it like Italian. Firenze. Firenze. Uh, Firenze. Firenze. Probably I, wrong, when, but... when actually I did like read it, I pictured the centaur with like an Italian accent. You know, like, <laughs> even though all the other centaurs just speak like normal people, Firenze that's why. had the that's why he's Italian not accent. Yeah, that's why they hated him. It wasn't Bane <laughs> instead of Bane. <laughs> It it's a me, Ferenze. <laughs> As an it Italian, I don't know how, what to think about this. <laughs> um, well, we all right. Your it's a me, Ferenze. <laughs> well, I did my nails, so. Nice. Just not a total loss. Same. No. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Paul, what color are they? Uh, they a are, deep purple. Uh, well, they're a gold base. <laughs> Um, with a, uh, a sticker on top that uh, divides the color into dark blue and, and dark purple. Mm. I'll show you after. Yeah. That's cool. Wait, what? Purple, blue, what, what, what? I missed that. They're, they're like, I, it's actually hard to describe. They're like sort of a Moroccan pattern. Are they on Instagram? They will be. Oh. All right, put them <laughs> on there. Nail art, hashtag nail Instagram, hashtag nails. Put them on there, Whoa. please. <laughs> I watch a lot of nail artists. Okay. <laughs> 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 I don't have a lot of love in my life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mikhail, have... we love you. Aww. Never and had patience so to do my nails like. So I never used to either, but then <laughs> I just like at one point was like, I want to be able to do my nails. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna do this. They look cool. 
Welcome to Nail Talk. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Nail Talk. Today we'll be talking with Mikal, who just did her nail. Oh my god. You don't sound like a valley girl. You sound like a Jewish grandmother kind of little. <laughs> what? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, there it is. Wow, I definitely have my accents mixed up then. Oh boy. Broken. Well, I'm sad I haven't I haven't broken out the English accent yet. Was there a reason? Well, if we're waiting for Greg, I mean, I no better myself, time than the and, present. And I, uh -uh. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> so just uh, message Greg. Good man. I'm putting on top coat so I can't type. <laughs> Me and my sister used to like do like designs and stuff when we were younger, and my sister was good at it, and I wasn't. So she, I'd usually do like two, and I'd be like, Jacqueline, I can't do this. You need to do it. <laughs> so she'd do it. And now she, we are far apart. Oh. <laughs> no, she's not too far. Two hours. That's so far. <laughs> That's like it's not really twice far. of one hour. <laughs> Almost exactly double an hour. It's really? It's like four <laughs> half hours. Damn it, I smeared it. <laughs> oh dear. Because you fucked up, Mikal. <laughs> Only valuable thing to come out of this evening. <laughs> oh no! I don't know. I thought well, that makes me the feel special. Was pretty good. <laughs> Mikal, we're not important. No, you are, but you're not on not... the fingers. Right. I mean, I could be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay now we're definitely not Rumi. It's -a me, Ferenze. <laughs> Finger, I, wonder, I wonder I wonder who yes. the mysterious villain is. Back. He came back. Oh cool. Yes, hello. Thoughts on nails? Oh and hey, the Mets won. I think. Wait. Mm -hmm. wait. <laughs> it's -a me, Ferenze. <laughs> I have something that's a UI error exception of type system out of memory exception was thrown. So <laughs> okay. sounds, sounds promising. Sounds like that might know. not be <laughs> great. Awesome. That might not be good for me. <laughs> MP3 scap recorder has stopped working. Right. Oh dear. Too much innuendo. Got broke. <laughs> it's -a me, Ferenze! <laughs> oh my god, I'm not looking forward to reading about Lockhart. I hate that guy. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh he's the best. Oh, he's whatever. the villain of the series. He yep. kind of is. <laughs> It's not that he's, like, awful, it's just that he's, like, the most annoying person. He's embarrassing. He's, like, yeah. super embarrassing. Like, you feel secondhand embarrassment while reading oh what God. he's doing. Since since I saw the first two movies before reading the books, like, yeah, his, his like, the portrayal by the actor really, like, pulls it together for me, because that's what I see in my head. Bernard. Yeah. Like, he's, he's just so good in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's more embarrassing that people in the Wizard World just straight up believe him saying bullshit. <laughs> yeah, like, can like, I, can can I just so go many... and make up shit and, and become famous? I mean, it's, it's believable. Pretty much. It's I mean, believable. it works. Because in real like life, I said, we, I have celebrities so many that are about chambers, people believe what they say crazy. just because they're attractive. And these are people that don't understand phones or, you know, or a lot of other really basic things, so... But they still they kind of operate off of word like of mouth. Mice into matchboxes. And probably had to, like, blow up mountains if they needed to, you know. It's like a bunch of children running around with dynamite. Does turning a mice into a matchbox constitute murder? Well, no, because it's a mouse. If you don't turn it back. <laughs> but is it the same mouse? I don't know. I don't or is know. it, like, a Deep. prestige thing where you're killing one and then making another? Eugene. Wizard Schrodinger. <laughs> oh yeah, I feel like they don't have theoretical physics in the wizarding world like that. They might. What are these physics? <laughs> <laughs> they're not laws, they're more suggestions. Something I think Arthur Weasley would say. Does it use spark plugs? I'm very fond of plugs. <laughs> <laughs> what kind? 
I'm floating. <laughs> what is going on? We don't meet him. Yeah, we don't meet him in this book. So yeah, we're still waiting on him. There's a lot of yeah. things that's. I mean, even the Weasley twins are kind of barely. No. Yeah. yeah, like the the Weasley twins aren't a thing. Ginny's not really a thing. McGonagall's really the only professor who gets. I mean, even Snape is kind of a non-entity. I think Percy has more of like an impact on these things <laughs> than Fred and George in this one, and that's really disturbing to me. Yeah. Well, Fred and George are still off, kind of developing their Fred and Georgeness, right? Mm-hmm. Although that True. Toilet, toilet seat line just slayed me back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, which one? That. Uh, they promised to send Ginny a Hogwarts toilet seat in the beginning, and then Fred and George send Harry a toilet seat uh, when he's in the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fred and Forge. Fred and Forge, yeah. I feel like it's kind of having a dick move of giving the guy who has to clean up magical messes, like the job of cleaning up the magical messes there is given to a guy who well, can't use right. magic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It is a dick move. I, 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 part of me feels really bad for Filch, actually. Why do you think he wants to hang kids up? He's so. I mean, repressed. they still operate off of a shitty class system, so. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's true, actually. He's back! Oh, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I had to go. Yeah, I had, to, I had to leave for a sec. I had to leave for, for a second, but, um,. Yeah, um, so you, you guys did the uh, summary of the, the chapter 17, I oh, imagine. Sorry, we're all done. Yeah. Add anything? Oh, no, it's just it's fine. You know, I, I, it's just I had to leave for, for, for a second, so it's... it's uh, but yeah, um, so yeah, it's just like cheating. I mean, the, the, there's, a, there's a, you know, an idea going around that because uh, Harry Potter gets, you know, the, the points despite the fact that he didn't tell anyone about what he found out and that he basically, you know, gets rewarded for violating the rules, essentially. Um, that That's a bad example. Um, oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, I, I don't know if you can... Hogwarts! Seriously nihilist after this. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, uh, I mean, um, seems like, you know, the way that they earn their points in the end, like, it's, you know, it's understandable why Dumbledore would reward them but the fact that you know it's it's got nothing to do with you know school the the, the work that they do at school necessarily it's it's a bit yeah um sketchy i would say in terms of you know rewarding um, they were just giving them for hermione's 112 percent on her yeah. Farm <laughs> <laughs> i love yeah. that she has that backup plan it's like even if you losers get kicked out i'm not <laughs> I think what she was saying there is like I'm not gonna get kicked out after that 112. percent Like I, I, well, it's not like that's gonna keep her in, but like she, she, like she's determined not to get kicked out because yeah. she got that, you know. She's awesome. She's gotta preserve the grade. <laughs> I, like, I, I just, I love how like she's, she's that good. Like it's because. Like, I was a good student, but, like, a lot of the time you would, st- especially for s- some shit like math or whatever, like, you would study really <laughs> hard, and then what? it wouldn't, like, come out in the, yeah, yeah, math is shit. Um, Remember, you're just not, not bad at, at all. all. So and then, I'll just try yeah. to mansplain how I was wrong about math at once, so I'm not gonna listen to that. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, actually? <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, um, actually, we aren't mansplaining. That's not what I'm just curious. I mean, <laughs> anyway, I just really like how that, like, how Hermione, like, studies her brains out and then gets, like, scores off the charts. Like, that's, that's like, viscerally satisfying to me on a certain mm. level. <laughs> I knew people like that. Yeah, I was always jealous of them. Shame. You know? I had friends. Yeah. <laughs> See, I was yeah, I was the person that like if I was studying and I was getting like super high grades, I'd be like, well, I need to slack off now, and then I'll get like a little bit less of a high grade, but then I don't have to do as much work. You needed to I slack off to bring your grade down. On something. What? <laughs> <laughs> was that? What was that? 
That could have been oh. an animal or a child. <laughs> That's a child. Oh. oh no, it's a mandrake. <laughs> <laughs> it's not <in> that book. <laughs> Wrong book. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I mean it's uh, I mean. It's it's just a silly house cup, like you know. It's a bit of a letdown after you know the the confrontation that we had at the beginning of the chapter. Like you know, who cares about the who cares about the house cup? Yeah, it's not really every like, you know, everyone in that room does. Yeah, of course, but I mean, as far as the readers are concerned, like the the you know, it's not really well. This is a very low, this is a very low stakes book. Compared to all the others, but at the same time, like I get really into the school shit. Like I really get into that <laughs> sort of aspect of it personally. Yeah, I think that's like what charmed a lot of people reading this, you know, initially. Yeah. And to be fair, like as as much as I am like, why do you care so much about the house cup? Like the fact that it is a seven book series makes it almost necessarily like ironic. Early, you know, as as time goes by. Because, like, by seventh year, they're not even in school, you know? And Yeah, and, like, a lot of that stuff gets dropped in later. You're like, oh, yeah, no, we, we don't got time for Quidditch. We don't got time for whatever, you know? Yeah. So, like, enjoy so it while it lasts. Like, Quidditch. Up in, sixth, in sixth year, I mean, it's like... I, I'm pretty sure Umbridge just, like, burns it. She, like, melts <laughs> it down and drinks it or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, also the fact that, I mean, there, there's a lot of things, like we mentioned earlier, like Dumbledore doesn't doesn't tell Harry Potter a lot of, you know, necessarily the truth the entire time. So, like, there's what, I mean, there's what he t- says to him about, um, yes, yeah, Snape, Snape and, and, and um, his father, etc. So it's, a, it's, is there not um, a point where... Harry Potter might might actually think, well, is Dumbledore telling me the truth about all of this, or is there something like, because some of this doesn't really add up in in terms of like when he, um, um, yeah, talk when you talk to him uh, earlier about you know the what, what he sees in the mirror, for example, like why wouldn't Harry like question the valid the validity of what is being said to him, like because um, he's eleven, just, just, of course, yeah, but I'm I'm just saying like, he's really suspicious of overwhelmed from being. Yeah. Besides, it is true from a certain point of view. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the yeah. connection between these two characters? And I mean, like, are, are we like full spoilers or whatever, right here? Yeah. Oh or, no, that's this not is good. barely that's in the show. show. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. Yeah. So we were so spoiling like, the cast anyway. So. <laughs> oh, okay. But and I mean, like, I know Greg doesn't like completely care anyway. But yeah, so. I mean, a lot of this is just a product of the fact that Rowling didn't have this all sketched out, and, you know, that's forgivable with these earlier books, I think. Well, I think she might have known why, you know, why Voldemort decided not decided to kill Harry Potter, but that's, you know... It's but, like, Horcruxes like, were not this, in her mind. Yeah, like. of course, which is not something that she wanted to essentially get into right away. Like, it's not really something that she felt like ex- explaining at, at the moment, but it would and be the, obvious why the character... Or, of Harry would would want to know why that is uh, right away, right? So, um, D- yeah. doesn't the Horcrux thing also explain a little bit why, like Dumbledore is kind of, you know, puts Harry in danger all the time because you know, he he thinks he maybe can't be killed uh, if, uh, through non extraordinary means. I'm not sure. I mean, it seems like you know, it seems like at least. Uh, I mean, at least Ron and Hermione think, seem to think in this chapter that you know maybe Dumbledore wanted to give him a chance to to fight against you know uh, Voldemort Voldemort by himself. In a sense that you know it's it's like this idea, but um, that would be terribly reckless of Dumbledore if that was the case. Perish the thought. What reckless of Dumbledore? Ah <laughs> uh, well, you know. It's, it's, well, my I, don't, I don't think it's well, necessarily... I, as, I, as, I, as he was, was as, as, as he would call it Tuesday, but it's a uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think it's necessarily that he's that he even thinks he's being reckless. I think he he thinks he's got this figured out, and maybe yeah, maybe it he makes lets it worse. Well, but maybe he knows, like you know, Voldemort can't touch Harry. Like maybe he knows this, and he just kind of wants to 
confirm it or see see it work out or you know whatever like because he he it turns out he does know a lot of this stuff later on that kind of makes harry invincible this time yeah but isn't that kind of reckless i mean it's a guess right he doesn't know for sure oh he does he knows the power of love (laughs) (laughs) yes but this is an 11 year old that you expect to defeat voldemort in the future which means you have to keep him alive right or maybe he just thinks because of the prophecy that'll keep him alive in addition to like his horcrux immunity in addition to well, his mother's spell on him and he's not even trying to protect harry then he's just you know oh the prophecy will save him i don't care yeah no i mean realistically <laughs> he should he they should have sat down and had a had a real conversation about all this and i mean in later books it even like uh was it <sighs> book 5 where he just kind of freezes Harry out and you're like what like he just makes weird choices well he admits he made a mistake doesn't he in not telling him earlier not maybe at this point he says this was too early but he says like he should have told yeah. him earlier what was gonna oh, happen yeah. but it's it's so hard to it's so hard to to say like oh I need you to like die <laughs> but I think but I think point. part of it yeah and because he didn't know if, he didn't know like if he would ever come back or anything and but I think part of that is yeah you 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 see you know this is a real person now instead of just the means to an end and you kind of just want to let them be 11, 12, whatever. And so, like, there's that part of you that's like, I just, want to not, I just want to delay that as long as possible. And you're restricted by the narrative. If you just tell them everything up front, then you're kind of all the cards are on the table and you're not really building towards anything. Oh, yes. for sure. Well, also, the idea of a prophecy means nothing at this point. Like, it's, you know, whether or not you like that as a plot device, it, it's a lot more powerful when Harry's gone through, like, five kind of grueling years at Hogwarts, you know. Um, and like has witnessed Voldemort come back and and all of that. I agree. Yes, no. <laughs> okay. <Yep. laughs> Did I just like awe you all with my brilliance? Yes. So awe. <laughs> so <awkward>. yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, what do we say? Um... <laughs> the the stakes do kind of change dramatically when that information is revealed. But yeah. I think that you're right that it it it's more of a payoff when we uh. We get it after all these books, where it feels like, I mean, yeah, Harry's not going to die in any of these books, but I feel like the tension is there in all these. Yeah, yeah. Especially I thought for I was characters. convinced he was going to die what, before yeah. book seven came out. What did you think the other books were going to, they were just going to be called something else, not Harry Potter and the so-and-so? No, 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 I meant, like, before book seven like, came out, like, I thought that, that, that Harry was going to die in there because, um... Oh, because you didn't know I, there I was, was going to be seven books? I was one of those people that guessed correctly that he was also, you know, so... <laughs> one of the next books is Ron Weasley and the Crippling Depression of Losing His Closest <laughs> Friends. <laughs> that was, like, the kind of book that J.K. Rowling's writing now. So. <laughs> Right. <laughs> that would probably yeah, and we would read it. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, I mean, it seems like you know, people are not people. People don't seem to be terribly upset at the fact that the teacher just died out of nowhere. Like they, they're still really celebrating. What happens to Quirrell? I mean, it... they don't know he died. He he, he wasn't popular. He didn't die. I thought they all knew what happened. Maybe they don't know Voldemort, but I guess they thought like they knew he was like evil or something. I don't know. Yeah, because I thought that Dumbledore said that he that he was left to die, like when Voldemort left him left his body. Yeah, but like, it's not at clear the last what actually like if he died immediately or just, like, no, Dumbledore Dumbledore often the, didn't what? want any witnesses. <laughs> well, the professor, the professor, um, before this. The whole time, like I don't think so. He's just like a scholar, maybe. Yeah, because he's like, like doing whole, research. The whole, the whole joke of like the seven books is that there's a different dark, defense of the dark arts teacher every year. So, Wait, yeah, yeah, is there really? <laughs> there is. <laughs> yes, because Quirrell just got I just noticed here. <laughs> Wait, oh my gosh, you're right. There's six different really? defense against the dark arts teacher. Seven. You guys, you guys are the worst. <laughs> 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 I meant before. Oh no! Yeah, I mean it's essentially just funny that you know when when Krill really, when Krill you know takes off his turban, he essentially re- just reveals another asshole <laughs> in the back yeah. of his head. 
<laughs> but it's a uh, yeah. But it's a uh, no. But the the idea being that he's um, sort of. I think I took it always that he that he was sort of a professor, but a professor of a different subject maybe before. Maybe. And at, at some point I he just he tried to been like off for a year or two. Right. Yeah, yeah. sabbatical in Albania. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bad shit happens in Albania. Why do they so go to Albania? It's just like Hungary. <laughs> yeah, so so I mean the last chapter is essentially like, you know, explanations, the chapter. It's like, you know, we're we're going to lay out every single detail. Like and I, I like the fact that, you know, it explains a lot of things like why Quirrell was at the Leaky Cauldron in the the first time we meet him in in the book, like and why um he uh, essentially um, was why why the why the spell was broken when he essentially got knocked out like um, when Hermione went over to 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 set Snape's uh, cape on fire during the Quidditch match and that sort of thing. So these kind of in these kind of innocent details that you don't really mm -hmm. realize are part of a bigger idea. Like, which is why I initially wanted to to keep the um, discussion of who, who was actually behind everything. Um, more of a secret during the podcast, but I guess like people have already read these books, so it's fine. It's just you know, but um, yeah, no, it's it's uh, yeah. I, I think the idea of you know a guy sharing someone else's headspace is not you know that would be <laughs> that that's actually quite weird. And I like the I liked how they did it in the film actually, and I now wish that they had stuck with the same with the same actor for Voldemort doing the other in the other films because i think like that's a legitimately creepy you know representation of the of the character like in the first film but um yeah they changed it so you don't like uh ray fines I, I know i like no ray fines just fine I, I like ray fines just fine it's just like he's not you know necessarily like as in as creepily intimidating as the as the first guy so he does have the best laugh though the best part. <laughs> but, I just like um, seeing the behind the scenes stuff, and he has this like big piece of green tape stuck over his nose. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, it must have been weird. Like it's the same actor actually as who plays Quirrell, who also plays Voldemort in the first film. So it's like really? they they did a yeah. I think it's the same actor. He just changed his voice for Voldemort. So, um, no, yeah, uh, I thought that was, was just a mask. By Ian Hart. I think it's Ian Hart. Yeah, Ian Hart plays both Quirrell and Voldemort in the first film. That's why. Um, yeah. uh, oh, hey, I went to a Harry Potter party for the release of The Cursed Child, and there was a kid dressed as Quirrell, and he looked so good. He was perfect. Aww. Yeah, and he had the whole scarf, and you know, it was, it was really good. That's so cute. I went to a party yeah. that was in a club, so most of the costumes mm. were uh -oh. different. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Nice. <laughs> uh, it was really weird. It was like nerds pretending to be cool, and then nerds immediately dispersing and forgetting all pretense of being cool the second the book came out. Yeah. <laughs> like the club. So <laughs> What, what did I think? Oh, well, we shouldn't talk about this because other people don't want to. But you can message me. I have yeah. I have, I have an article coming out tomorrow that's part of my thoughts. Oh. I don't think I can do that. But yeah. Good or bad in first impression? Or just, just, you know. I don't. Do you guys care? Yeah. Well, I think I I'm guess, about. I don't care. Done. I mean, I care to know, but I don't care necessarily, you know. Casey, um, do you care? If I, say I care. I care, but I can go. Yeah, I'm gonna let go. myself, so it doesn't matter. Adios. I mean, I need. <laughs> <Spoil> myself. <laughs> well, and sort myself, I guess. <laughs> Crazy plot. What should I call no. this? <laughs> All right, I'll go so you guys can talk and discuss. Okay, sorry. No, 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 it's fine. I need. I actually probably should go to bed because I need to get up at six in the morning. Oh, so. Go yeah, go to bed. <laughs> All right. Bye. bye. Goodbye. Bye. Yeah, it, it is almost six in the morning where I am at the Aww. moment. So, fine. Oh, good morning. So, yeah. Um, Eight in the morning for Naughty. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Goodbye. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and the child. Um,
So, what's your takeaway from the from the cursed child? <laughs> it's a me, Ferenze. <laughs> Editor's note, from this point on, the podcast will contain spoilers for Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, but since it's December, I think that's okay. Enjoy. Um, I, I, overall, I don't like it. It's not canon for me. I, I, I can't, I can't accept Voldemort babies. That cannot, I can't Yeah, that's that. the part I really did not, I mean, there were parts I liked, but that was the part I particularly did not like. Yeah, I mean, like, there's, there's things like Scorpius is delightful and yeah you know. he's so my geekness is quivering yeah <laughs> he's, he's very very cute and and i like that draco's good people and i like that everyone's still pretty happily married which means a lot to me <laughs> like, um ron was, I think <laughs> she does... like ron, he was like the comic relief in the whole book yeah yeah for sure i heard he w- he comes across a little bit more nuanced on stage Oh. oh, could be. Yeah. But yeah, I had actually initially thought that um, the fact that Tom, I mean, because in in the second in the second book, Tom Riddle says essentially that he sort of um, gives his part of his soul to Ginny when he when he possessed when he possessed her. Essentially, that's the thing. But it's sort of like he sort of says, you know. Um, to, to sort of impart some of his own soul to to her and something like that because in in sort of exchange for some of the secrets that she, she gave to him right um, so I always thought maybe you know that's that's a way that they could bring Voldemort back in a in a way that you know maybe Ginny gets sort of like uh, turned into a Horcrux Horcrux long term or something but I mean that's the not... thing is like for me I mean I was disinclined to into this anyway because I do kind of feel like mm-hmm. when you end your story with the words all was well like there's a, yes no, yeah. not the digger yeah. can't write anything because I would never say that she can write whatever she wants but like but it as a reader it feels like that's the conclusion of the story you know and I'm yes. not saying that everybody's life has to be perfect but in terms of like the boundaries of what we know that's that's kind of what I expect and then yeah like how like no, I mean, I it would be studying the story it was obviously the central characters were the children right the next generation basically at least they could have had a villain who was new like Voldemort is dead and gone right so have somebody like come up with a new character yeah i agree i think it it's it's yeah i mean like the honestly the idea that Voldemort would have a child like makes me laugh and makes me disgusted you know? yeah <laughs> like i it, it's not like it doesn't work at all for me aside from the fact that like forget even the timeline like it just doesn't yeah a shred of well, sense well and it doesn't really like sit well with his character cuz right. his whole point He's was essential. living forever right exactly and that's actually like a really cool um contrast to dumbledore you know who is obviously yeah. you know motivated by love and lust in a certain extent um, so I, I didn't like that. I mean, and so now I'm stuck in a like uncomfortable place where I, I like that, like there are parts of it that I enjoyed kind of in spite of myself. Um, but, yeah, exactly. but like, I don't also even want those to be canon in my head because then Voldemort babies has to be canon. And I'm like, no, it makes you kind of want to give more like press her to focus more on possibly like the prequels and stuff because we have fantastic beasts and where to find them coming out in like november and Mm. that looks actually pretty good because i just would love to see like harry potter movies taking place in like different parts of the globe seeing how they do stuff how do like the wizards in like china how do they cope with stuff and oh i don't know if i want to see that but okay (laughs) Like something like Word of Fire. I mean, I, I, right. Like Fantastic Beasts to me, I'm like, great. I hope it's really good, but if it's not, that's fine. You know? Like, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't, like, I can only gain from Fantastic Beasts because I'm not emotionally right. connected to yeah. it. You know? It's not as important. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm. this, this is so important. <laughs> and it's, you know, I mean. Well, yeah, because it's connected to the this, whole series. Yeah. Yeah, the whole Voldemort baby thing was the most fan fiction-y part of the whole story. Like, yeah. 
It's it's probably it sounds like something out of a soap opera to be honest. It's yeah. like oh, but I had but he had a child and that's those you know, fan fictions exist. Uh, <laughs> I I know, just took it straight up from the fan fictions. A lot of the story elements yeah. they look yeah. familiar, all of them. Yeah, no, it's totally true, and it it I mean, it doesn't even... fit the character in in a sense because and it, it sort of bends. The character to fit the plot, and that's not really how this this should work, right? Yeah, I agreed. And even even the even honestly the the time turner stuff, like you know, I'm sure we'll talk about it in book three. Like, I'm fine with the way it's used in book three. I'm not like a, a total stickler for like everything has to be exactly scientifically accurate. But like, there's a reason she didn't use it in any other books. You know, like that that's that's dangerous stuff to get into both from mm-hmm. a like yeah she basically had the time tennis destroyed in book five right because yeah exactly she, yes. get it again. and then like these two writers were just like but what if time turners like all the time turners <laughs> you can go back I to her. Just go back like an hour and this can go back like years and years and years yeah ex- and I, I really was not into that at all and it, it was just, weird it felt i mean my my theory about like Spoilers for the article that's going up tomorrow, but like, the the thing is that I, I think that fan fiction and I love fan fiction and like everybody's saying like oh it's like fan fiction and I'm like I'm thinking that too but I like fan fiction so why am I thinking that because I don't. It's good fan fiction. Right. So I'm like this is bad fan fiction. So fan fiction to me like functions on the what if, right? So it's like what if this conversation happened or what if these characters were married or what if this happened in space you know like that's fan fiction and that's great for fan fiction several fan fictions in one right exactly but this is like canon can't be a what if story because it is itself you know so it it yeah also I I think we're starting at all (laughs) (laughs) wow it was like you (laughs) Do you think you might have liked it a little bit more if you actually just went to see the play instead of just reading the manuscript? It's totally possible, because there were a lot of lines that I was like, are you kidding me? This is not good writing that, like, the actors yeah. could probably have pulled off, you know? Um, but in terms of, like, the... But I'm sort of glad that I kind of was able to, to do it like this, because I feel like Voldemort Babies would have made me really upset in a theater. <laughs> 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 so is it like the little creepy baby in Deathly Hollows, or is it something? Different? No, it's like Voldemort it's like a... has a full-grown daughter oh, in the park. Ah, yeah. uh-huh. what? Yeah, with Patrick <laughs> so Strange, which is like, are you fucking kidding me? No. Really? Yes! What? Like, they could, they it's, not have any other death here, like... It's hinted at in the, in the, in the last book that, she's, that she has a thing for him, but it's actually not reciprocate it right. like he's not really, really he's not really sharing that yeah because obviously he doesn't really give a shit about anyone so yeah. why would he, he could... give enough of a shit about her of all people to have a child with her that's that's you know, he could have desires. <laughs> For, i'm not sure he has those like he's not really into, i mean he's probably into snakes what he's uh. into people to be honest <laughs> but oh. uh. nagini nagini <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's it seems weird. Like I mean, I haven't read I haven't read it, and I'm have no no real interest in reading it because I I feel exactly the same way that everyone that 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 you feel because it's um the seventh book was the last one for such a long for such a long time. So you know why a play of all things should should be the continuation like because all, money. It's just, I know, but still, it's it's. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't really well, feel not, like it's, it's part not of the money same for thing. J.K. Rowling. Like that, I yeah. cannot believe she gives so much money to charity that it is, uh, and her book. Oh yeah, well, I just meant like the people urging oh, for yeah, yeah, another. Sure. Yeah. And the person. Also, this isn't the prime way to make money. Like a stage play is right. not. The, no, but I don't know. Hamilton's raking in some good bucks. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but they're not like they're. I mean, they're getting sold out. But it's not. I mean, I guess like promotional material, like the book and stuff, is making a ton of money. But like, it's not. It's, there's there's a limit to how much money they can make. Well, honestly, even uh, the it book, wasn't like, supposed to be this big. Well, no, it was, <laughs> but I mean, like, it, it's. I don't know. Like they 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 kind of want to have their cake and eat it too, which is like mm-hmm. this is not in terms of, like, readability, just that great anyway, right? Like, yeah. I mean, 
like you read Shakespeare because that's the only way it's available. You know, if it was were available as a novel, I don't think people like as a, an original from Shakespeare novel, if novels existed back then, like I don't think people novels existed. <laughs> but I think the, well, the like thing is poems, but not really novels. Uh, Chaucer, but like uh, the the poems. thing is. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> anyways. anyways. <laughs> So, so there's a difference between like plays that's written to be read, and plays that are written to just be performed. Yeah. And those are diff- completely mm-hmm. different ways of writing. Um, and I think this was a play that's written to be performed, which is fine for that's probably, you know, yeah. performed mm-hmm. when it's when, just... when it's a performance. But they you have you have to to be able to write a good play so that people want to read. That's actually much harder than writing even a novel. Which they had well, and I thought intentionally she never intend. Yeah, she, I thought she right. never intended to release the script. So this was just sort of going right. to be like a stage thing, and like maybe that's how it was sold to her, and she kind of thought that was a better idea. It would live there, you know. I feel like that's how it should have been kept. Yeah. At the same time, though, people would have been clamoring for it. Well, they I would mean, have then, lost their then own. obviously the spoilers came out, and I didn't know like the spoilers in detail, but like it. It was definitely, like, it was going to get out one way or the other, and, like, this was the way to please the most fans, but it was also super lazy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. If they, if they actually wanted this yeah, to be I mean, good. they could have, like, adapted the script a little if they were going to release a book yeah. at the same time. Yeah, that's what yeah. I thought they were doing. <laughs> well, apparently they're releasing another one of, like, oh. the, the, like, finished script. This is the rehearsal. Oh. And it's like, now they're really it? broken yet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's so why would you? So why would they release the rehearsal version and not the the final one? Because it's going to sell. Yeah, because yeah. then they can sell two books instead of just oh, one. Yeah. Oh yeah, there wasn't this line in the first one, but we put a different line in the second one. And oh, eat that up, like, nerds! Really cheap to print because it's like not. Just even ink per page is less than a novel. You know, it's less page. You don't have to describe stuff. Yeah. They are all they are all Skeeter, apparently. Like, <laughs> work it out to the max. Um, no, it's um, yeah, feels weird. Um, and to be honest, like, probably something that that reads badly, like on the page, might actually get uh, performed well by by an actor or an actress. So. Like, I think that's what happened. Yeah, it was uh, yeah, we, yeah. Because apparently, I'm not sure. Like, I haven't seen the play or anything. So, if if um, you know, if if it got good reviews, then probably that's because of the acting that you know elevates the material. Um, yeah. Also, be- honestly, I can't also accept that like Cedric Diggory would never have become a Death Eater. Okay, <laughs> like that just would not have happened. Yeah, it means everything. Like, huh? That's the whole point. Is there, so it's like a it's like a time weird alternate reality thing, isn't it? Like it's something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They oh, basically yeah. end up using this time oh, that's a bunch of times, stupid. and like yeah, the one but reality they it takes them to is like is like yeah, they go back and humiliate yeah. Cedric, so he sort of loses <laughs> and doesn't die, but then he's so humiliated that he becomes a death eater. That makes no sense because in the book, in the books, he even offers like the cup to Harry. Like he doesn't even like think about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just and we know he he's a Hufflepuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Shiny. Vampire. Yeah, half a puff. <laughs> uh, yeah, half a puff. They, they are too, too. Uh, how do you say? They, they are too. I, I guess the, the, the point is like bland, bland or average, but um, they, they seem to be like too. Yeah, I don't know. Hufflepuff always, always screamed like, "I don't care. Like, <laughs> you do what you want, you guys." But we, we just do our own thing. Yeah, but they're also um, like they're they're good. Cedric is good, yeah. you know. And that mm-hmm. like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not like. Again, I don't want to be that person who's like, "Oh no, they ruined his memory." It's like, no, they didn't ruin his memory. Like, this is fictional, you know. But but at the same time, I do feel like, again, it's just like the way the character was presented. Like, honestly, reading. Reading this book, it was a little bit like I was surprised that like Cho Chang didn't show up as like a drug addict in a trailer park, or you know, <laughs> like Good wasn't like you know had an overdose on something. You know, it was it was kind of and ridiculous. Why was there 
Yeah, it's like it's it's like the it's like they they use the elements of the time like uh, the the um, uh, time turner like the, the fact that it changes events and stuff and they went to the extreme with it like they didn't like change things a little they had to change them in a big way because you know this is a play and so they had to make sure that you know the changes were were actually significant enough. For for the you know the the time turn is to actually be be impactful like and that's but at the, at the same time it seems to come at the expense of the characters most of the time so um, yeah they they just you know instead of having little things change throughout they just change them like they they leapt three steps ahead um, yeah that it, it doesn't seem to be thought out that well like in us in my, yeah but yeah. I mean, there's also there's a lot of fan service in it like there are like and maybe this is different in the actual play but there are like direct lines quoted from like the books and like the kids are like really really well the kids sound like they were like brought up reading the harry potter novels like that's how well they know their parents adventures and it's like that would so not happen i i i don't think yeah. I don't think the Obama children know what their father did in seventh grade. You know, like it's not. Yeah, no, I don't even. I don't know much about what my parents did when they were like eleven or twelve. To so. be fair, though, it was probably way less interesting. Yeah, right. So I'm going with Obama, like yeah. somebody who's. Important, oh, of course, but, yeah. like, you know. but even Obama's seventh grade probably wasn't mostly, super interesting. Yeah. I think it's mostly Scorpius who knows all the things, and he's a geek. So. But even Rose, Rose at the beginning is like, oh, our parents met their best friends for life and on the on the train to Hogwarts in their first year, so we have to do the same thing. And it's like, why would that's that hurt you? It's, it's just because it's just nostalgia. Kids, like, right? Meeting your friends is something you tell your kids about, right? Oh, yeah. that's <laughs> I guess like, it's it's not like I don't think they would ever hear like oh and we met on the Hogwarts Express and that was great but like the idea that they would meet on like that that they would be that they would attribute such significance to it you know like more significance than like hey we met these awesome people you know yeah, it's it's almost as if they are readers of the original of the original book series yeah, who are what, watching yeah, that play yeah. and that's it's sort of like they have to make it as important to the characters as it is to the readers, um, because the readers enjoyed the f the first book so much that you know, um, yeah, it seems it seems there's an awful lot of pandering going on. But I have, I mean, as I said, I haven't read it. I might, you know, if I if I had read it, maybe I would find something like it's just what I'm hearing so far doesn't doesn't really inspire me to to seek this out. Yeah, I mean, um, if you know the spoilers, Honestly, you might like it better because. You'll be Maybe. for like the really bad shit stuff. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So mentally, oh yeah, here is where this bad shit insane. Right, exactly. Plot twist happens. I mean, okay. It's funny because like page on page seventeen, like, and I know this because I looked at it and I was like, okay, this is going to be a reaction page. Page seventeen is when everyone's like, oh, maybe Scorpius Malfoy is Voldemort's son, and I was like, oh, this is what we're in for, huh? Like, it was very much like, okay, this is what I need to expect from now on in this play. Did you yeah. just read it and go, oh, no. I did. I really did. <laughs> it was just like, why? <laughs> Honestly, I, I really enjoyed, like, the lead up to the release of the book. Yeah. Like, the parties and, you know, people dressing up and all that. That was so much fun. Yeah, that was fun. And I had, I had some really good al alcoholic butter beer. That was really good. So that was fun. Oh, uh, yeah. Guess it's, you know, guess it beats not having anything. <laughs> no, it does. I don't know. Actually, it I don't know. know. Like, people I don't are like, know oh, well, that. I'm glad the story is continuing. And I'm like, I'm not. Like, I was good. I'm kind of. No. Yeah, uh, like, yeah. But the I thing is, the story ends with this now, right? right. She's not yeah. gonna keep going afterwards. Not, not yes. in my head. Not in my head. But it seems, but, but it seems like the backlash against the epilogue, which was, you know, so, like, um, happy, you know, everyone has sort of kids in the traditional sort of family um, sort of sense that, that, you know, that wasn't, I mean, the, the, the epilogue was written like back in, in 92 or something on 95, I don't know. Um, and so like, 
people who read the epilogue were sort of like a bit upset at the fact that it was sort of so unambiguously happy for everyone and that you know someone would name their their child victoire or whatever something like that it's like um you know it's 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 cliche i mean it was a lot of i mean it was really cliched in a way like and then it seems like this is a reaction to that it, it feels like yeah i have to fix this because people didn't like the way i ended the the story originally so let's just you know second guess everything from the ending and you know tack on another chapter of the story in a sense and then this is what came out but this wasn't this doesn't seem to be like really organic from what i understand yeah. i hated the epilogue because it was written badly <laughs> yeah it was it was written yeah. away, uh, from that's, the only, that's right. my only problem with it i don't care how happy they are i mean yeah. the, the epilogue to me is like i it works on an emotional level it doesn't work on a literary level like an artistic mm. level um, i don't know i feel i just feel cringe worthy the entire feel cringe the entire I don't know, I it. haven't read it in literally, like, ten years. Um, yeah, I read it, I read it like, the first time, but then... <laughs> That's almost true. It's eight It's it's eight eight years since the last book came yeah. out, right? So. Uh, nine years, I think. It was nine years. Oh, 2007, yeah. yeah. Right, so nine, almost ten years, yeah. Uh, wow. And for me, I mean, like, I was sobbing. Like, I read it twice, and mm. both times was just, like, sobbing hysterically. I was just, after Fred died, I just... <laughs> Don't think the writing was that bad. No. <laughs> I, was, I was so sad <laughs> that the book was ending. But um, so I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what I think of the epilogue, like, this time around. But even so, like, okay, so that's, like, an epilogue. It's a couple of pages. You know, it's, it's yeah. you know, I, I don't. Also, this wasn't Rowling's idea initially. You know, it was, like, these no. guys were, like, let's do a Harry Potter play or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I feel like if Rowling just didn't give her name to this whole thing, it would be, be better. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so what if she does? So what if she does? Like, you know, there, there are people who say, well, I, you know, oh, oh why does Martin give his name to the to the HBO show? It's like, you know, whatever. Like, if, he, oh, yeah, if, but, if, if, you, if you don't like, if you don't like the show, then don't. Well, you know, okay. So there's a difference. Between, there's a difference between play by whatever, whoever wrote this play. And, and then and then and then and then from the original source, J.K. Rowling, and then J.K. Rowling also gives like a a, a, a a preface or whatever, and acknowledges that this thing is not just some sort of weird ripoff of her material, and that she acknowledges it, but she yeah. doesn't have that much involvement with the plotting and all that stuff in in it. So, um, yeah, and, and it feels that, like she's feels like she spends too much time. She, yeah, and now her right now her name is on that book prominently as one of the authors, playwright, whatever, right? Yeah. So yeah. people just assume that she wrote this thing, even though it's the other guy who actually did most of the work. I feel like a more apt comparison is the World of Ice and Fire, right? Because yeah, yeah. I mean, actually, maybe not because George actually wrote a lot of shit for that. Like he wrote all the sidebars, but like he he is not the main contributor. Yeah, and, it's basically and it's sold on the basis of his name, basically. Like yeah, it's sold. basically Elio and uh, Elio and Linda, you know, writing their own stuff and then getting approval from from Martin because they know him personally. So yeah, yeah. But the the idea is still like, uh, um, it's yeah, it's that's not actually part of the story, right? It's it's a it's a history book. It's a right, that would be know, like okay. Like a history. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Exactly. This is more. Yeah, I see that. This is a continuation of the story itself. Yeah, Monopoly. true. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, but, I mean, you can treat it however you want. Like you know, for most people, like the story ended at book seven, and to me, I'm not interested in reading anything after book seven. To be honest, yeah. like I'm, I had my Harry yeah. Potter phase when I, you know, when I was following the release schedule, like. I, I remember like waiting for for book seven and then when I when it came out I got it and I I finished it in three days and that was that so um, and it's then that was the end. Scream with my sister. I, I'll probably talk about this when we read the book, but like mm -hmm. I, yeah. I really had to like my sister and I were just like walking up and down like the road by the ice cream store just like and I was crying <laughs> just like eating ice cream. Yeah, it, you know like it was really something that I had experienced my entire life. You know, and then it was over. Yeah. Or so I thought. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. But yeah, the movies you, didn't finish until two thousand two thousand ten, right? Didn't they? Yeah, but I have I don't see the movie, so I was Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's interesting. I mean, from an adaptation perspective, I always find them interesting. Like you know, in some ways they, in some ways they are actually really good. In some ways they, they you know, drop the ball on some some of the more important subplots, like the Dumbledore stuff in book seven doesn't you know doesn't really show up in the films at all, really. So it's it's yeah, um, but yeah, that's uh, I mean it's it's uh, it's interesting that the um, um, I, I mean generally did does does the cursed child like did it get like mixed reviews or is it just like us like who really are you know i don't know i think like like reviews no i say. think the script got like generally mixed reviews negative to mixed but the, uh, the play itself I've, got better reviews yeah uh-huh. i've seen some people really like it um but even uh-huh. even the people who really like it admit that the plot is a wreck <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's like you know why? I mean, what did we expect? Like with the with the the story having been finished almost ten years ago, like the, the author has spent so much time apart from these characters that I feel like it's difficult to, you know, get back into it. And and oh no, but she has, I think I think if she, she were has yeah, if she were really sitting down and writing something in the Harry Potter universe now, and like took a couple years to do it, she would do a great job. But like this was just not that. Yeah, I'm not so sure because you know at some point you sort of l- lose the uh, connection that you have with with all the characters that you create, right? And that's and and the story maybe you know it's 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 like if mm-hmm. Martin stopped if Martin stopped writing uh, a song of ice and fire for let's say yeah let's say ten years. And then he says, okay, I'm gonna write a dream of spring. And then he finds out, well, oh, I I don't really like. Feel the same connection I felt with these characters. Um, yeah, but she's, been, ago, she's she she keeps doing a pot of more stuff right now, anyways. And I feel like she's yeah, got to toe mm. in the water for sure. I okay. feel like it's yeah. diff- it's different for people like Martin, who's written so many other things. I don't think Rowling has. I mean, I think for these things, for the, these books are so uh, definitive for Rowling that I don't think she can just walk away from those characters, and that's why she keeps coming back to them. Yeah, possible. Yeah, I mean, she has written something on a pseudonym because uh, once because she yeah, yeah. she found she found that it was actually getting yeah. much better reviews if people didn't know that it was written by her. And then after it got rave reviews, she she sort of said, "Yeah, that was me." So yeah, yeah, uh, but the, just compared to like Martin has this whole other body of work and all of those other characters that he has created. I actually think TV that was really Max. cool with like the the. Cuckoo's Calling because like that was like that actually leaked way before she intended on letting people know that she had written that book um like I think she might have actually sued the person who who, who uh, released it but um like I read it and I thought it was fine but like mystery people were like all over it you know mm-hmm. mystery people who were these mystery people Oh, I mean, like people who read mystery. Okay, guys, I, I have to go. Yeah, oh, yes. I'm actually probably uh, going to go too. Yeah, we should probably go. <laughs> All right. To wrap this up. <laughs>